Oh, well, you're famous now. You're on the on the Pork and Bean Show. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're famous for having double digit views. We got the high <laughs> double high double digits. No, no. We, we usually we <laughs> no, no. We usually get some. Sometimes we get a you know like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred views. Where, you know we get. That's we cool. Okay. That's great. Yeah, that's, that's on, great. That's on Facebook, but then it, then it goes over to uh, the black hole of of of, of YouTube. Uh, I'm not even on YouTube yet because uh, all of my show, my show started as a community oh. radio show. So it's it's up to this point, it's all been all audio and I haven't bothered making some sort of video out of it to put it well, on as YouTube. Long as, you got, as long as you got ears listening to you, that's, a, that's the win, right? That's the yeah. win. Yeah, I think averaging about three and a half thousand downloads a week. So that's pretty cool. There you go. How many? Three and a half thousand a week. From oh. your from your show, yeah, from my show, yeah. It's three and a half thousand. Oh, that's good. Three and a half thousand downloads, and that's sort of via Spotify and all the other all the other platforms. Alrighty. Well, you're 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 oh, more you're, famous than we are. I hope you record. <laughs> I hope you record this show that you can put it on your show. Um, that actually reminds me. I do need to. I can't. I can record the audio, but I can't record the. Um. The Don't worry about video. it, Beans. I'll send I'll send you the the YouTube video when when I um, edit it and whatever, and we, we can do that. Okay, we're gonna also, go back. Also, okay. Zoom breaks it up into chunks: one audio and one video. So, yeah. okay, we're gonna go live, guys. The meeting is being live streamed. Yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is Port Cunningham, and I'm here with my distinguished, honorable co-host, the world's handsomest man, Frank Oliver Beans. And uh, we're very pleased today to be joined by Sarah Bignell of, um, is it Yowie Central? Yowie Central and Australian Yowie Research. Awesome. Awesome. From the land down under. That's right. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> have you been have you ever been up over have you ever been up this way <laughs> up over <laughs> up, i've been to europe i haven't been to to the united states but i have been to i lived for in spain for many years so ah, yes. well, oh, that's, that's nice i've been to spain a couple of times isn't it amazing i love spain it's, uh I, no, just, I, I was in uh i think madrid in yeah Bar in barcelona which aren't aren't that you know, you're in a city is a city, so it's you know, I wasn't too thrilled about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a big bustling city. That's for and sure. it's like doesn't Spain have like a lot of uh, like sort of arid country? It's not it's not lush. It's only lush in some places, but a lot of it's kind of arid, right? Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Exactly right. Yeah, it's actually like a mini version of Australia. It's got that really dry center, and then it's got. You know, right. lusher, mountainous bits on the on the coastline. When I went there, I think it was in the seventies, and uh, I see. Well, I forget what I was doing. We're going to some kind of a convention or something, and uh, so we're taking the bus in from the airport into town. And I looked out the window, and it was like everybody was dressed in American clothes. In my mind, it was everybody was supposed to be like. Having donkeys with little, you know, with uh, you know, peasant clothes. Everybody looked like they're Americans. I thought that was uh, that was my culture shock for Spain. <laughs> yeah, they're they're pretty much just like everyone else, especially when it comes to, you know, everyday life. It's they're definitely just like you and I. Well, M Mr. Beans is from Georgia, and I'm in uh, British Columbia, Canada, so we're in different ah, so countries too. You're different countries. Oh yeah, Absolutely. and different time, different time zones. See, I'm I'm a Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, and he's well, he's a, he's in fall fall in the ocean time. <laughs> he's what fall in the ocean time? Yeah. So yeah. You, can't, you go as wet as west as you can go until you fall in the ocean. That's his time zone. <laughs> got it <laughs> okay i gotta take a deep breath now because i've had a very frustrating day working on my book it's just been like I, I i've been spending time on it for the last two days and i haven't got anything accomplished i'm trying to upload it 
and they keep finding errors in it. And I don't, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So it's just like, uh, oh, that out of my mind. Yes. <laughs> I can understand why that would be incredibly frustrating. Yeah. And then I did find out I, I, I was learning a couple things and then the guy who but look at it, but look at his haircut. Look, I mean, he does, he look frustrated. He looks like an executive, like a retired <laughs> executive. Yeah, it was down to it was down past my shoulders just two days ago. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you decided to go for the chop. How come? Uh, because I like because I'm 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 hiding from the law. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to change my appearance quite regularly. <laughs> At least so, you can grow a beard for that, huh? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So Sarah, how did you become interested? How did your journey into um, the Yowie start? Well, it started definitely as a little girl, always being fascinated by uh, the idea of uh, cryptid creatures and fairies and goblins and elves and ogres and all, all the, the what, what we call fantasy kind of creatures was always what had fascinated me. And I do remember seeing that Patterson Gimlin footage as a as a girl and being absolutely spellbound by this incredible being um and and i was always just there was something about bigfoot that that drew me to to the whole subject uh and then uh when i was uh, uh, I'd been a social worker for many years and I took a break from that. Um, I, I was working with victims of crime and it was a pretty heavy duty, heavy duty job. I, I worked, oh, well, I won't go into the details of, of what that work was, but it was just really heavy duty. And I was in a really toxic situation at work. So I, I took a break and after about 12, 18 months off, I, I wanted to do something and, and a friend of mine uh, did a show on the local radio station. So a really tiny little frontier radio show. And she said, I really need a co-host for this Friday. You need to come on and talk about anything you like, but just talk about something. And I thought, oh, God, I'm not very interesting. What can I talk <laughs> about? Um, and then the only thing that I could think of that might be interesting to people that I had spent many, many hours reading and watching and listening and learning was about Bigfoot and the Australian version, which is the Yowie. So I got on and <laughs> crapped on about that for, for a bit during her show. And she said, oh, wow, that was great. You should do your own show. And and I thought, well, I don't know anything about radio or anything like that, but I've, I've got to do something. I'm, I'm bored now. After 12 months off, I really need to do something. And and uh, I started a, a little show. So I did a show every week uh, in starting in uh, 2019. Um, I started just doing a, a, a one hour show every week, just volunteer. To, how to, it was introducing the idea of this being to yeah. my local, my little local uh, community. Uh, after a little while, I started uh, uh, putting those shows on. Uh, the local radio station uploads their show so you can listen later and they have a, a mixed cloud channel. So I started loading the shows on there and uh, they just became more and more popular and, and my audience started growing, which was really cool. And, uh, and then at the beginning of this year, I decided that I was finding the structure of a, a radio show a little bit too constrictive and uh, you know, you have to do a show that's exactly 57 minutes long. And I was having all these amazing conversations with witnesses and, and having to edit stuff out that I didn't really want to cut out, but it all had to fit within that, that uh, 57 yeah. minutes. Um, so, so at the beginning of, and you have to have a, you know, a music breaks. And I, I felt like a lot of that was breaking into and distracting from yeah. the material. Probably only 45 minutes of actual talking or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so I decided I'd go, I'd fly solo from the beginning of this year, and I've just been doing it as a podcast only. And and as I mentioned to you earlier, I, I hit um, actually got three thousand seven hundred and something downloads 
two weeks ago. It's sort of averaging about three and a half thousand a week, which is so amazing. I, I remember when I first started and I had and I had 200 people in the Facebook group and I was beside myself with excitement because it was like, oh, my God, there's 200 people listening to my show. And now there's 2,700 and something in the Facebook group, um, which is just a, a forum. Uh, what's the, what's the name? Give us names. Don't hold back. The, the Facebook group is just Yowie Central, like my show. Okay. Um, and people can request to join. It's a private Facebook group, and it's a space for people to share their experiences without ridicule. So I don't, I don't, the, the people who want to say that other people are hoaxing and bullshitting and, you know, well, that, that what is, what is, what, what does without ridicule mean? I've never heard of that in a, in a, in a, a Bigfoot group. Without mocking someone and saying <laughs> you're a, you're an idiot, that's bullshit. You can't have seen that, and what you're saying is impossible, and uh, that's ridiculous. And what were you smoking? And gee, the oh, mushroom is being good. <laughs> so, you know, all of that. That's all of that. You're I'm off your meds. A, yeah, yeah, all of that stuff. Um, as a social worker trained in trauma response and recognizing symptoms of trauma, what I realized from the very beginning when I first started interviewing witnesses was that these people were seriously traumatized and uh, really traumatized and had been often carrying a burden of this for many, many years without being able to share it with that many people. Because when they had shared it with the one or two people, maybe from their family or close friends, they had been laughed at and teased mercilessly. And that's not very nice when you've had something that was so terrifying you and life-changing that, uh, and then you try and share it with people and no one believes you and people laugh at you and call you crazy. That is horrible. And so that doesn't happen in my Facebook group. Um, I'm so, really strict about it. So what what uh, what, what percentage of people do you have that look at it as a positive experience? Because we do like we, I've got personally got Sasquatch teachers. Beans has got the same kind of thing. Like we have a loving, beautiful relationship with them. And I look at them as like very, very uh, spiritually high like, energy. Like fa family, friends, mentors. Yeah, like family and friends. So, and you know, like I, I would say that we're very much along the lines of, uh, you know, this guy, uh, uh, Stephen and uh, Evan called him Uncle Donnie. And I, I can't remember his last name. Oh, but yeah. yes. Stephen. I had a, yeah. Uncle Donnie yeah. is the most beautiful human being. I had a three-hour conversation with him a couple of days ago. Uh, he's he's amazing, and he shared uh, he shared some really special things with me about um, what the Indigenous people of Australia. Uh, what their thoughts and feelings and some of their stories are about our hairy friends. Some of those things I'm not, I don't have permission to share that they shared with me confidentially, and I will, will absolutely respect that. Uh, but there are some things that I can share. But yeah, well, Uncle Don is great. Fortunately, uh, so we, can, we can share anything we want. And I've had, I, I pretty well uh, and on the same page as, as Donnie. I mean, uh, I've seen them do all kinds of stuff, shape shift. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, uh, materialize out of thin air, um, you know, like the no time thing, past, present, and future is all, this, all that stuff. I'm very much on, on board with, with Donnie. So that's the kind of stuff that we like to talk about on the show. So if you want to get weird. That's Love it. Bring it on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, look, and I, I, I do get people, um, some people get quite, uh, somewhat, I think somewhat strangely irritated and angry when we go down this path. Well, there's a when reason you're, for that. You're, uh, you're kicking the tires on their worldview, you know, and it's like, what? Yes. Don't judge my worldview. My worldview is my world. This is my world. Yes. And, you know, well. But here's the thing. Some of these people consider themselves, and I'm not making any judgments because that's one of the things that Sasquatch, one of their lessons is don't judge. But some of these people consider themselves to be experts just because they've been at it for a long time. But the bottom line is, is that if you don't have a heart connection and respect for the Sasquatch people, it doesn't matter how much time you're spending tromping around in the bush trying to, 
you know, uh, trick them with game cams, which you can't do and all that stuff. They're not going to respond to you. They're not going to interact with you in a meaningful way. So they really don't get a lot of the real meaningful, a lot of the um, real magical things because the Sasquatch just, they're not interested in them because they're not in the right place where they're only interested in reaching people that they can teach or, yeah, basically teach and connect with. And I'm sure you've heard that before. Yeah, absolutely. Because with the the world, the world in in general uh, depicts uh, our. Well, I'm just getting a little note that my internet connection is a little bit unstable at the moment. Just so you know. Um, yeah. You cut out a just, little. Bit. Just FYI, I'm out. I'm out in the middle of the country, um, but so just if it freezes, talk amongst yourselves, it'll come back on. <laughs> um, so I th the problem is we depict these beings as being monsters and something to be afraid of. Yeah. And so this creates this, uh, when, when, when people start to think about them also having natural abilities, this is an apex predator in their in their eyes that is faster stronger has what appear to be supernatural abilities uh that that for many people is terrifying because they've been taught to be afraid of these beings so i think that's part of the problem uh, what i'm trying to change little by little with my show is that is the the way we view our hairy friends and i totally agree with you that that, that they're people um, Australian Yowie Research, which is the research organisation I work with, we are we we are interested in peaceful contact. Um, even though the the original name for the group was Yowie Hunters, as you can see, <laughs> as you can see up there, the Yowie Hunters, it, we, we're not interested in hunting them at all. It's about that learning from them and about peaceful contact. Yeah, I would love people, to hear people about. People are going to learn a lot more if people decide to take the Jane Goodall approach. Hmm. You know, then, you know, how you just go out and just sit and you make a relationship, uh, you know, at, on their terms. They're going to learn more in six months doing that than it, they have done in the last 40 years. You know, yeah. You yeah. For instance, if you go up in there and say, hi, I'm Sarah, I would like to meet you as opposed to going and setting game cams up and, you know, <laughs> carrying a rifle over your shoulder and trudging through the woods. You're going to get way more interaction response and connection with them just by by um opening up to them with your heart so you said you like to learn or hear more about what you're saying you like to hear more about something oh can't remember what i was thinking about but uh, i i agree with you though i i've been uh in the last few months since i've had the the pleasure of meeting some very powerful spiritual healers and and people who are connected to that world that invisible world um, I've been, I've had the, the pleasure of learning more about that and been, I've, all, I've been meditating every day for quite some time and I've had Yowie people coming in to communicate with me lately. Uh, wow. and yeah, it's been pretty amazing. I haven't shared this. I'm sharing it with you guys on air for the first time. I haven't even shared it with my listeners yet. Uh, cause it's something that's, that's, really... that's rich. That's rich. Uh, 12 years. I, I mean, uh, 10 years, 10 years. I've been in a relationship with a Sasquatch. I only heard one word of mine speak. So, you know, I would love so to hear that. about, so what's, can, can you guys explain a little bit to me about how that's been happening for you? What, mine speak? It, well, no, this relationship, this teacher, the, the relationship that you're having with them, What's how how is that? Oh, my, how did my, that start? my relationship with them is not like anybody else's because because I, I don't go in the woods. They came to me uh, like you. I also was involved in the mental health of humanity. I have a, a healing modality. And so that's that's on one corner over there. And um, and I used to be a yogi, so I used to do a lot of meditation. I mean, I was a real deal kind of a yogi. So yep. when I just heard about the Sasquatch, uh, you know, I, I, I got a hold of my friend who had a radio program in, in Houston, Texas, and I was living in Miami, Florida, and I was just talking. To, I, I wasn't concerned at all about the Sasquatch people. I just, uh, this guy was talking on, on, on one of his interviews about how he, when he goes in his house, he thanks the plants on both sides of his door because he's got these thorny plants 
He says, thank you so much for keeping my house safe, right? And for some reason that stuck in my head. It's like, who's uh, he's from Texas and I was born in Texas. So I'm thinking, how is a Texas man, you know, big burly Texas man talking to a plant? Well, anyway, uh, so I call him up and ask him about that because I thought, what a headspace to be in because I never heard of, any of, that, of that before. And in the end, um, I kind of ran out of things to say. He's, and he's part Indian, so he said, well, that's the way we do it. We, are, You know, I'm part Indian. We talk to everything. So uh, th then then, he, then I sort of just shifted the, the, uh, the topic over to Sasquatch. He told me, just go out in your front yard and say, uh, hey, Sasquatch, uh, you know, you want to be friends? And so I did that every day for about two weeks. And then at the end of those two weeks, you know, I kind of almost forgot about it. Two, two American Indian shamans, Mexican Indian shamans, came and took me out of my bedroom and took me out to some place out in the West that was just rocks and red rocks and, and mesas and stuff. And they had me talk to this god rock, right? So I'm talking to this rock, and the rock is a god, and God and the god rock says, uh, you know, I'm going to teach you about how water and rock make life. And then after water and rock makes life, the new life makes more water and rock. And he went in from the whole history of the, of, of the earth from the water and rock perspective, which were elementals. And um, that kind of blew my mind. And, I, and the next day I was like, wow, I had this big dream kind of a thing. And it was, right? And then later on in the afternoon, the, that rock talked to me again and talked to me about how water and rock wanted to give light to humanity, right? And so they worked with the people who were, who, were, who were working with electricity, like Nikola Tesla and, and all those guys, and all, you know, in both sides of Europe. And, and uh, then, then because you know, the, the rock is magnetic and copper is, you know, it conducts electricity. Whenever you get those two spinning together, it makes electricity. And then to make it spin, you need like waterfalls. So the first you know, electricity generating, generating plants was from a, a dam. So that was pretty cool. And then the next day after that, he, he said, um, you know, we wanted you to have light, so that's how you got light. And he said, oh, we wanted you to have radio and television and, and, uh, and the Internet. And uh, that was the th third day. And then the fourth time, it was like a, about a year later, he finished it up with quantum physics how they wanted to give humanity quantum physics quantum physics from the double slit experiment remember that's the whole thing that started the double the the quantum physics kind of thing is what it was is a little photon of light going through this double thing and getting then hitting on the recorder well that is quantum physics is a study of is is a study of consciousness and that's when they added consciousness to to the fundamental forces of the universe Okay, this all <laughs> this is my introduction to the Sasquatch people, and that was a long about way of answering my question: How could my friend in Texas say hello to a plant? And they they did all this for me, so that that's that let me know who they were right away, and uh, yeah, and then they spent two years explaining to me how the all one and no space works, which is kind of a, it's kind of a hard to take in because you know we kind of. We kind of have an imagination what the all one is, right? You and me and everybody and it's all one, right? We can have this kind of romantic idea, but we don't really have an idea of what no space is. And no space is that there is no space between you and me. There's no space between anything. And if there's no space between anything, there's no time. And that you can simultaneously be me and you and a Sasquatch and, and God all at the same time. And uh, that's, that takes a lot to percolate around, but that's where they go when they go invisible. They go into no space, and they live in no space. And that's how they can go invisible and not leave footprints and appear in people's house and all the kind of stuff that they do is because they live in no space. Yeah. That's how I got started. And, and, you know, I've been gifted tree breaks and, and, uh, and glyphs and... Uh, little animals that give me moles and and i've given a a, a mouse uh several several squirrels and you know they give me little gifts this is like not every day but i mean this has been going to stretch it out over 10 years but you know and then they and then they uh one day i think it was after about four years of being three 
three years, four years of being uh, in a relationship to them. And they said, they said, brother, they said the one word that was brother. And I understood that when they don't give you any information, you have to feel it for yourself, what's real, without words. But um, this one Sasquatch stuck his hand inside my chest, right? An invisible hand that was this big went inside my chest. It took over my breathing, right? And this is initiation, and I already had initiation from a, a Satguru, and I know what initiation is. So it's a transfer of energy and consciousness. And then I was getting this transfer of in energy and consciousness about how to do heart light meditation. And, and then I, I've been doing heart light meditation ever since then, every night, every day. And uh, that's how they go invisible. What they do is they raise their vibration up with their breath and they lower their, their thoughts with their mind to a one-pointed mind, which is to go invisible or to disappear. So it's a higher, higher vibration, a higher energy and a lower frequency. And, uh, and then just you disappear. They, uh, with, th with their help, about a year later after doing hard light meditation, I got my leg to go di to disappear. The that same as my Sasquatch came back had me doing this and just to the point I was breathing really hard. It's like connected breathing. You, you really build up the energy, which is piezoelectric, which is electric energy, which is light. You build up this energy in your heart and, and, it, and it floods your whole body. And, and, uh, and then with a certain amount of energy, that I, I couldn't actually do it myself. I was being helped. I sat up like, whoa, I'm in panic. I looked down and only had one leg. And I'm going, what? I could look, I, my, my left leg was gone. Right, and that was that was it. That was just enough to let me know that it can be done, and that's how they do it. It's not. It's not. No. There's no defying physics at all. It's the way that it's. It's just an energy frequency thing. So that's kind of mine in a nutshell. And since I don't go in the woods much, you know, I just run groups and and uh, talk with with uh, Port Cunningham, and we do little shows, and that's about it. Well, wow. like, like they, they give me insights and clarity too. Like one of the insights they gave me just this last month was they showed me about a thousand Sasquatch, right? They just showed me a thousand Sasquatch and they're connected on an intimate level to four million people. They are in their minds and they're feeling, they look at their eyes, they, they live, they, they live, they interface in and out of their, in and out of their energy field. You can't feel them. You know, Brian, Brian and I can feel them sometimes when, when, well, like when they give thought placement or when they poke your feelings or when they make you feel excited or you change your life from going this way to going this way. You know, there's a Sasquatch in there. If they're looking out after you, then they'll, they'll, they'll they want to, they want to teach uh, without words and with, and from completely from the back, right? They don't teach up front like uh, like we have teachers with words and ideas. They'll just give you a poke of a feeling, you know. And the, to me, that's how all of the Sasquatch programs, including you, there's been, you've been poked since you were a child. And that means they've been watching you since you were a child. And so there's one component of all the things that you do that has, definitely has a Sasquatch or a, a Yowie footprint, uh, fingerprint on it. And so that was... The, they give me little insights like that from time to time, like the insight knowings. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when I started to, when I first started doing the show, I didn't realize any of this spiritual dimension existed really. Uh, and I, I certainly, you know, I was indoctrinated into the Catholic religion as a young girl and went to a Catholic primary school and a Catholic secondary school. And that's all I knew about spirituality was, that stuff which i and i the, which never rang true for me anyway which i i never felt that it was true i never felt that i was part of that it never nothing nothing about it rang true for me or resonated with me um but when i started understanding more about the yaoi the yaoi people and about the bigfoot people the Sasquatch people uh and that there was this element to it uh, i have noticed i've certainly noticed that energy I've certainly noticed um, signs that I'm on the right track. Uh, and, and often that's an energetic sign. But all of a sudden I'll be bubbling with 
excitement and joy when I'm doing some of this work. And, and that's, mm -hmm. that's when you're on the right path is when you've got this, uh, it's hard to explain, but you know what I'm, I can see you nodding. So, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You're being, you're being poked or a little bit, a little yeah. bit like, you know, turn on the light. Look at this. Yes. Yeah, excitement. Yeah, really exciting. And like I'm home, like I'm doing the right thing. Um, do you feel it like do you feel like an energy or you just feel like you're exci excited? Uh sometimes there's a little bit of both. Um like the other day I was I was meditating and I was thinking of the particular Yowie who's connecting with me. Uh I do have his name. I don't know if I'm I'm really supposed to share it publicly, it's but okay. Um, yeah, I haven't been told. I haven't been told not to. I just, I'm just not sure if I should. It's all a bit new for me. This, this connect, that particular connection. But on thinking of him, uh, he's male, um, and 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 already, um, he is female. Who's black, and there's a baby. Um, I just. My heart, my heart, and my head just went, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm so excited about this! I can't, I can almost not contain myself with excitement because I think this this connection is real. It's not just in my imagination. It's not something that I'm putting in there. It's images that are coming into my head. Uh, and the name that came to me wasn't something that I'd thought of before. It just came into my came out of my mouth. So, yeah, that that. Well, if they that don't, if they don't want to, like, like with me, they don't give me names, and they they want me to feel them on an energetic level, one hundred percent. So that I, so if they do something, if they put a stick lift down, I have to sit there and feel what it means. They don't tell me what it means, you know, and it's like that. So, and when they give me like this little vision, when when they showed me the 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 uh, a thousand Sasquatch connected to four million humans i had to figure out what they were what they were trying to tell me about that so you know it's, they they just give me these little hints like that but if they give you the name you see that's also giving you permission since they know what you're doing now they know what your mo is right so yeah, yeah i wouldn't I guess worry so. about that i wouldn't worry about the name it's that should just be on you if it's precious enough like i i, I told you about all the gifts they've given me they gave me a gift last week, and I and I was going, oh, I'm excited because I don't ever go in the woods. So I so I, I was excited. I was going to jump on the pork and bean show group and say, oh, listen, I just got da 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 right. And as as soon as I put it in the in the in the thing and, and hit enter to to send it right as a post, it glitched, and then it glitched again and it glitched again. And after it glitched three times, I said, oh, I'm not supposed to talk about this one. <laughs> so. I don't talk about it, so that that was still that took that's the way they work, and they'll let you know what not to do. So when they say they give you glyphs, are you are you saying that they're leaving them on your front doorstep, or how are you finding them if you're not going out into the bush? Yeah, I've had I've they uh, I just, I live in the middle of a suburb and in inside the city of the limits of Savannah, which is about uh, three hundred thousand people. It's not it's this little sleepy southern town. And they'll I have an oak tree. There's oak tree. We, this is a tr uh, tree city, right? There's lots of trees. It's a famous for being trees in the city. So every house got all these oak trees and pine trees. These are so there's always stuff on the ground. But then when they they at one time they gave there was a, a, a section by my mailbox where they would leave me the glyphs, and I'd go out to the mailbox every day and look at the glyph, you know, and then maybe I'd change it around and I'd say thank you or whatever. And, you know that went on for a couple of years. No, they don't give me so much, but they also used to throw rocks at my window and throw rocks on my roof and give me little plushy toys, little toys that the kids, little kids have, like little, little, you know, these little small toys and colored ribbon and stuff like that. That's how they do it. Yeah, they come to my house. There's a portal right down the street. There's a big giant oak tree. You know, there's got these southern oaks with the, with the limbs that go all the way down to the ground. I don't know if you've ever seen those. But uh, there's one of those with a big pine tree right next to it, and it makes like a portal. And that's where it comes through. And that's where I've had squirrels falling out of the sky and a, li a live rat dropped from waist height. I'm walking along, right? There's right in front of this house. And, and there's, there's a rat 
appears out of thin air at waist height, drops on the ground, and it's alive, and it starts running around, and it started running towards me because it thought it was, I was a tree or something. Then when I started jumping around, it must have made my Sasquatch friend laugh because I was jumping around, and then the rat figured out what I was, and he took off. But I mean, <laughs> stuff like that, you know, over the years, the same place, they come to me, yeah. And they, uh, you don't have to go to the woods. If your connection, like your connection, the, the kind that you have, you don't have to go... Uh, you can go to the woods if you enjoy going to the woods. If that's what your heart is into, then do that. That's basically what it is. I have I have um, three dogs, so when I go to the bush, it's not quiet and peaceful, <laughs> and it's it's highly unlikely that any of my hairy friends would come and visit while I've got the dogs there because they're so noisy. Uh, <laughs> I've been I've been told by, uh, well, actually, Uncle Donnie said to me the other day, I was explaining that I had three dogs, and he went, oh, no, you're probably not going to see them out in the bush then. <laughs> they don't like dogs. <laughs> don't, put it, don't put it past them. What I, what I would do is go to some place where there's camping, uh, like a well-known camping place, because Sasquatch like to be around people. Right. They like to look at people. So if you go to this, just the regular uh, mom and pop camping locations, you know, uh, and near you, to me, that's where I would I would set up my research. And, and because, you know, then there's, ki there's kids there and there's humans that are all doing their thing. Yeah, that's that's where I would look. Yeah. Instead yeah, of going yeah, out yeah. in the wild where there's nobody, you know. Go where oh, there's I'm, 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 I've had some pretty wild experiences way, way deep in the woods. Yeah, you're yes. more likely to walk right up to you if you're if you're like not around people. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, we get look, saying, we get I'm reports the about the dogs. They're they're going to be there if, even if you have dogs or not. <clears throat> they don't. I they, do. Uh, it don't depends on the dog. They look. They used to like my little dogs. I had little chihuahuas, and they used to stop right in the middle of the trail and they'd look off into the woods because they could sense them and see them. And they, they, their tails would be wagging, and they, like they were friends, right? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, oh, they, oh, they, they like my cool. Yeah, they like them. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that would be cool. I always, whenever I do go bushwalking, I do quite a lot. Uh, and because I live on the edge of forest um, in one house and then up at our farm, uh, we go. I go walking uh, in the bush as well. And uh, I always speak to them and I say, uh, look, we're not going to be here for long. Please don't hurt my dogs. I won't let them hurt you. Uh, so, so please, if you if they're annoying, we're not going to be here very long, and we will we'll leave the place better than than when we arrive because I usually pick up a bit of rubbish and stuff. If yeah, they notice that. They notice when you clean up the forest and clean up after nature and stuff. They really appreciate that. Yeah, I think you're doing it right. You know, you just you be polite and take what they give. That and that they will end up giving you a lot more than you ask for. But if you, you know, you don't you don't have to you don't have to give them food or anything that is like a bribe. But you know, some people share just because they like sharing. And um, I don't know. They already know who you are. You know better than we do. There's a, you ever heard of the life review of near death experience and people talk about the life review where they see their life, right? Yep. Well, there's, there's a psychic experience that, that, uh, that I've experienced and, and as a Sasquatch do is whenever they connect to you, they, they do your whole life review from birth to death. They know everything that's going to happen in your life. And this is common for them. And I, I call, I call that tagging, but whenever, they can do it at your night when you're asleep or they can do it when you're camping or when you're walking around. They just get close enough to you so they can read your whole life. And that's kind of a kind of a good way of looking at their relationship. They know everything and they're respectful of everything and they're not going to control your life or do anything, but they will they will just poke your feelings to say, get excited. about it. What about being on a talk show? Yeah. That, that's cool. And see, and the whole thing, that's how they do it. The whole thing unfo unfolds really nice way. Yeah. They know what you're going to, they know what you're going to be doing or thinking. They've proven it to me many, many times, years before you even formulate the thought. They literally do. It's because time is not linear for them. The past, the present, and the future are all accessed by them in the now. I mean, I, 
they've proven it to me many, many times. That, that, and, you know, the, their lessons, how they taught me that, that that's true. So, yeah, they're, uh, you know, like when you're on the other side, there's no, uh, there's no time. People say who have near death experiences, they come back and they say it doesn't feel like there's time or whatever. Well, that's the same experience with them, but they're on a higher, a high dimension, which is probably, even though they're not, they're not deceased, they have access to that kind of knowledge where, where they reside, right? So, yeah. And so, how did how did your journey start? With- you, know, you, you know what? You remind me very much of myself because I'm used to being a host of a show, so. <laughs> it's like you're interviewing us, which is fine. Which <laughs> okay, is fine. I'm the, I'm going to interview you now. <laughs> Actually, you both have to come on my show. We'll do another. We'll do. We'll catch up again, and you can come got, on my show. I got so much to talk about. It, it's kind of hard to even know where to begin. Hmm. Um, but basically, I got a mind speak. They said I was walking. I always had an interest in them all my life. So I'm walking along with my dogs, and I got mind speak in my head. Go to the woods. Well, after that, they started connecting me with all kinds of people who could enhance my journey and whatever. And and now they they guide me to go to places that people need talking about or whatever or thinking about them. And I find out that they just experienced something with them or whatever. It's like connection, connection, connection. Uh, and so it's uh, you know, it's all about energy. Because we're all we're all energy beings, so it's all about energy, like mind speak. Uh, uh, well, telepathy is the same thing, but uh, but my my thing is is that, oh, and they also communicate me with through glyphs. I can read a lot of them, and that was early on. They really were connecting with me through a lot of glyphs. I got some outstanding glyphs, and so I can read them and I can communicate with them back and forth with glyphs. And, you know, but and downloads and stuff like that. I've had a lot of downloads where I've had like instant universal knowing, you know, like stuff like we're all one, all connected, um, no judgment, no fear. Uh, love is the core of everything, uh, no division. They're teaching me about all the things that people today, the things that control people today, judgment, fear, division, all those things that, you know, like make us easily controlled. Well, that's not who we really are. So they, they teach me that. And uh, that's what I actually speak about and, and share with people because I think that's the answer to the transition ship is, um, is you know, t- uh, raising our vibration. Because when you're in that high vibration, like I, I've seen many times, and there's less valleys now, you know, uh, although today I was pretty frustrated with my book, but <laughs> there's less valleys. But when you're in that high vibration, you can't think on the, terms that regular people think you know about hate and, and judgment and whatever i mean when you're on your highest vibration even a guy like uh my beautiful prime minister in, in canada you, you you don't judge because you know he's just doing his part to wake us up right so it's 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 about it's a lot of that and just amazing experiences like they teach me through um oh, all kinds of stuff you know like uh you know, they'll appear out of thin air in my room or whatever, and there's a lesson behind that. Lessons about time. It's 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 really just too detailed to go into, and in, you know, in, in your in your interview here, but uh, but it, it it's a teacher student relationship, and uh, I don't fear them. As a matter of fact, I expect that soon I'll be. Ta- I, I I think very soon I'm going to be sitting down with them. Actually, I've been told that, and I and I got a feeling that I will, uh, like right face to face kind of thing. And wow, it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So it's uh, it's all positive and all loving with me, right? I mean, I feel like I'm not telling you hardly anything because it's just chock full of experiences. And but it's basically about people go into the the Sasquatch uh, pursuits trying to learn about them, but really the, their main lessons are teaching us about ourselves, our universal nature. Right, that's, that's what they really want to do, right? Yeah, right. That's something that I'm, I'm, I'm learning now, I guess. So I often get asked, in fact, I was asked this question just the other day in an email, why do you think that they're people? And... I haven't responded to this this person in detail. 
but I'd be interested in your thoughts. Why? Because so many, so many people out there think we're just looking for an unidentified missing link ape that's more animal than 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 human. Um, well, because they've got, well, for one thing, they've got language uh, written in a spoken language. I've actually heard them talk too. So there's that. They're, the female DNA, I mean, I don't look at them. I don't care about science and that so much. But the science does say that the female DNA is, is all human. And the male uh, is unknown, maybe off planet or something. Uh, they live in family groups. You know, they have brothers and sisters and kids and they love them and they take care of them. And, and, they, and they, you know, they're, they're very much like us, very different and very much like us. Although they don't fall into the traps of, um, uh, you know, like they don't care about possessions. Obviously, they don't have uh, government. And they don't have wars and so much. And they don't uh, they don't hate and they don't judge. And they they do all the things that we're supposed to do and that are, are in our true nature. So they're, you know, when you talk about, oh, the humanity of somebody, you know, and it's, it's expressed like a good thing, right? But we don't express it. If anybody expresses the humanity, it's them. They, they epitomize what humanity should be. So they're very much human. I did hear something recently. I was watching, somebody sent me a snippet of, um, there is a man, I think he's American, who channels an, uh, an alien being called Bashar. And mm. somebody sent me a short snippet and, and he was doing a talk and someone in the audience had asked him about Sasquatch. And his response was that Sasquatch are the original hominins of this planet and they've yeah. been here for hundreds of thousands of years and we as humans are uh, uh, another alien race took sasquatch dna mixed it with some other um some other concoction of their own and human beings are the result of that so they are the original hominins and they have evolved on this planet uh, and evolved all of those, what we would call supernatural abilities. Uh, for them, it's natural abilities. So that that when I heard that, it was one of those moments you were talking about when I just went, "Yes, that's it." That it 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 just rang so true for me that I, it's hard to it's sort of hard to explain the feeling that I got, but I, just in my gut, I felt that is that is what who that that's what happened. That's who they are. Um, and they're way more, way capable of way more things than, than the, the average human uh, could even imagine. Well, I think we're capable of it. Probably maybe had those abilities at one time, but we've kind of been shut off from that and don't remember it. But yeah. if you have a connection with them and they consider you family and they're teaching you, you start getting some of these abilities and stuff like, uh, um, you know, like uh, clairvoyance and uh, healing and stuff, you know, like they've, they've, some of the stuff that they, they're capable of have rubbed off on me and other people. You hear all kinds of people who have enhanced uh, abilities of some kind just from the connection with them because they're, they're constantly teaching us. They're teaching us about universal things. They're teaching us about who we are and they're teaching us about the abilities that we have. So... I, I heard that exact same thing from someone else the other just the other day. It's really interesting that you're talking about that now. It's like the second time in in a week that I've heard that message. That, um, in fact, it's the third time in a week that I've heard that message. So there must be something to it. Yeah, but I'm not speculating. These are experiences. I've had yeah. all these, and beings asked too. We've had all these experiences that are beyond speculating. Yeah. You know, I mean, you just know. And plus, when you get downloads or whatever, like massive downloads of information that mm. I get, and uh, there's just a knowing. You probably know. I'm sure you've heard of that. It's just like you just, you know, stuff that is more concrete than, you know, knocking on wood or whatever. It's, it's more real. It's, it's just, uh, and it's all energy. And I, I but I, I had wondered what their purpose was for showing themselves to us because they seem to uh, what appears to be at random show themselves to people 
uh, people out in the in the forest, but also road. There's so many roadside sightings, uh, quick roadside sightings that. Uh, and I had wondered, I was been wondering for years, why do they do that? Why they can hear well, the car, they can they see the light. They want to wake us up. Yes, they, they want to wake us up. They're time lords. They're time lords. You know the story of the Doctor Who and the time lords. Yeah. Yes, yes, well, that's I what do. They, that's what they're doing. They're on the. They're on this thing called Team Inside Out. Only their their mission is a, like a fifty year or a hundred year mission. So, you, you know, somebody who's, who's uh, sees them on the street, you know, as a drive by and there's a little kid in the back seat and he says, oh, you know, and then he grows up his whole life, you know, knowing that Sasquatch is real. And then, it, you know, he goes off and be, starts a podcast or something. But yeah, it's team inside out. They're changing us from the inside out and they're changing us from the background, not in the front. So for them to go to the front, that's, a, that's an epic transformation in human's life. Now I want to tell you a story uh, that, that we got last week from Chris Leesk. And I think this will help the viewers, who's whoever watching this, kind of get a grip on who the Sasquatch are. This guy Chris was telling about his friend, his friend that he, he communicates with every day, and they go out in the woods to you know, hang out with their Sasquatch friends. And both these guys are having... Uh, you know, connection to Sasquatch people. But anyway, this guy, his friend, got taken to a to a mothership, and he described the mothership as being uh, ten miles across and a hundred miles long. This is a big ship with many different stories, and there was a huge amount of uh, extraterrestrials on there. They said that there was like thirty five different extraterrestrial nations out there on this ship, you know, because it's a mothership. This is, they're gigantic. So, uh, uh, and he, he, I don't know how he got on there, but, you know, you go onto the ship and he's, and he's being escorted around and being shown the ship. That was part of what his situation was. And uh, so he had a, a, you know, a handler and they went, they went to this like big, big giant room. I don't know if it was a dining hall or something. And, uh, you know, the handler is talking about the different types of of, uh, of uh, ETs that are out there, and then, and he said while he was watching, uh, out of one door in this big hall, this big room, a uh, giant uh, eight foot hairy man uh, just walks through the rocks, walks through this room, and out the other door, and in his mind he thought, what are they doing with a big hairy ape thing, you know? Uh, you know, it looked like a Wookiee. It looked like a Sasquatch. And he said, well, what are they doing with one of him on the board, you know, on, on board the ship? But the the guy who was do, being his escort could hear his mind speak. And he said to him, oh, that, uh, that guy, those those beings right there are the most intelligent beings on this, on this ship. Wow. So wow. we think of, the, we th yeah, because we think of, intelligence in a completely different way than they do mm. right these people can manipulate energy and manifest stuff and do things with their mind and body and go invisible and stuff they are highly intelligent beings and respected out through the whole universe the sasquatch have sasquatch who live on planets and they also have sasquatch who fly spaceship yep. they have their own fleets of spaceship so let, let, me, let me give me an example there's, of how there's nothing there's nothing primitive about them let me give you an example of how evolved and um, omnipotent they are. One time I was camping with my wife, or we weren't actually camping, but we were at, at a place uh, at night. It was really, really dark and we decided we were hearing about orbs, which is one of the forms that the Sasquatch take. I've seen them in about 12 or so different forms, even like the predator kind of form, the shimmery watery kind of form, semi cloak fully materialized, a bunch of different shapes or states of uh, being. And uh, I decided, okay, well, we're going to take some pictures of orbs. And, you know, it's like thought placement, like what Beans was saying. So a lot of these thoughts are not your own, that you will be nudged to have this do something because they have something to show you. And that's an absolute fact. Once again, that's not a speculation. It happens to me all the time. So I know it for, for what it is. It's kind of another form of mind speak. The thought placement, like for instance, these are wonderful, it's like this, and then you look down and the answer is right at your feet, like instantaneously, that happens a lot. So anyway, we're, we start taking pictures and 
my, in the pitch black, my wife has her camera out. First, it was all black. So it wasn't bugs or anything or any water on the lens or whatever. Then we seen a couple like what looked like orbs coming in. This is all within a couple of minutes, right? Okay. Then the next picture was a bunch of orbs. Then the next picture, all these orbs formed into one beam, one huge beam. Next picture, the beam walked off the camera. The next picture, we saw a huge face looking at my wife. And this was all in mist, okay? Kind of a misty kind of thing. Because I've seen them appear out of mist and whatever. So that's one of the ways that they they show themselves, whatever. So, and I've got some pictures of them in mist form. So it walked off and then the, the beam was looking at her. And then it just dissipated. But there was a lesson in that in that experience, okay? And this talks about how powerful they are. The lesson I got out of that, that they gave me, was that this being was bringing its consciousness together from all different points of consciousness. You know, that's that's like godlike. That's what they say God does. God's here, there, and everywhere. This being was mm -hmm. gathering from all, like I said, all different points of consciousness and forming into one entity. So what does that tell you? And also, when I'm talking to people, and I can feel them, and they can feel them, and they're, I'm talking to somebody uh, like a friend of mine who's connected and all of a sudden he gets a knock on his wall or whatever. It's like th they are privy to all these different people's thoughts and they're working with all of them like simultaneously at the same time. So anybody who tries to tell you that they're, uh, I don't know if you know who McGilla Gorilla is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You do? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're not McGilla Gorilla. <laughs> they're, they're very, very highly evolved. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that the the that concept <laughs> blows my mind. It's hard to it's hard to get my head around a lot of the concepts too, isn't it? Like for most people. Yeah, uh, but but they they show us and I'm talking about me because to my experiences, but they show us in so many different ways of what they are and it's and it's not like geez, I wonder, it's like, it's really like a hammer over the head. Like they, they leave no doubt, but it's an important point. Eh? So they, yeah, they, they've got all those abilities people talk about and more, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've had reported to me the same things that, that you just mentioned, uh, that pixelated, someone can see the outline of a, a huge humanoid figure but it's pixelated uh so that you can see sort of through it but it's translucent but it's like the predator from that movie um yeah. i've had i've had people report to me seeing them disappear in front of their face and fade out right in front of their face uh, i've had someone report um driving along in their car and seeing a yowie but that it disappeared and they drove through yeah, where the yeah he was and the, felt you know those the, you're, you're talking about it live on tv live on uh, whatever it is pork and beans podcast right you're talking about that live every single one of those events the sasquatch knew that you're going to talk about it so that's why they did it they, every single thing they do like that is a teaching because they they do that to some Poor person, and a poor person goes, "What?" And then they go, "Who can I tell? Who can I tell?" And they start telling everybody, right? Yeah. That's a teaching, and that's the way they teach. And and it, and it could have been five or seven years ago when this event happened, and then they tell you, and then you tell everybody else. Yeah. That's well, I don't know. Goes. That's what I was saying. Of around a thousand uh, Sasquatch are connected to this four million people, and they know how these stories are going to like ping pong around, and you know. So, yeah, wonderful I, place to do, to be. I'm sure you've considered it, and you've probably experienced it. But you know, they're listening in right now. They listen into all. It's not just the pork and bean show. They listen into all the when their people, the people they connect with, are talking, sharing whatever they're 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 listening in. They're right there. Like I can feel them right now. They're listening into us. And uh, I love that. I love that thought. That just <laughs> that makes me so excited. It's, 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 very, oh, yeah. it's true. It's true. It's not only not only them. Yeah, I believe there's, you. Yeah. there's huge amount of ETs out there. There's about 200 different varieties of ETs. They're just floating around in our atmosphere and beaming us love all the time. We wonder why all these people are waking up and jumping out of their skin. And like, oh, it's awakening! I'm awakening! I'm ascending! Right? People are talking about that kind of stuff just because they're yeah. we're in this whole 
time of awakening, time of heart opening. It's, it's a good time to be alive in a way. So tell us one of the tell us one of the weird stories, or not weird, one of the yeah, beautiful yeah. stories that that's kind of far out, like you know, according to our understanding, and Uncle Donnie Firmer, who I love, and uh, he's my brother. He's listening in, by the way. Yeah. Say hello to him. So tell uh, us, hi, tell Donnie. us, tell us one of the one the more far out ones, you know, like you, you've been told, or you probably heard quite a few. Give us a few stories. Uh, I think she froze. That's okay. Uh, a woman who was driving in her car, this was some years ago. She's driving in her car. It's midnight. Um, it was New Year's Eve. She's decided to leave where she was uh, live home along a very dark country road and near near a national park called the Bongle Bongle National Park in New South Wales, which is in on the eastern coast of Australia. And she's by herself with her little dog, a, a little old little little dog. And it's a but it's a bright night, so that the moonlight's really bright and she can see a lot behind her and around her. And she notices running through the trees while she's driving at about 90 kilometers an hour, which I don't know in miles, but it's a fast highway speed. Yeah. And she notices through the tree line um, a being that was uh, running, but it started off on all fours and it seemed to be getting moving through the trees but running along, paralleling her but getting closer and closer to her. At first, it's on all fours, and she thinks, what is that? Is it a horse? Is it a cow? I don't know what it is. It reaches her car, and she realises all of a sudden that this isn't a horse and it's not a cow. It's It it's, it's, has an ape-like face. This is her description. And all of a sudden, it rears up onto two legs, still running, looking in at her in the window. It, it had an expressionless face. Her little dog is going ballistic in fear and cowering on the floor of the of the car. She's losing her mind going, what the hell is going on here? What is this? It's looking in the window at her and all of a sudden it jumps over her car and runs off into the, the forest on the other side of the road. So this being has is can run on all fours and two legs as far just as fast as a car traveling on fast highway speed uh it then show it was sort of showing off you know look what i can do i can i'm as fast as your car and i'm going to jump over it and freak you out and run off uh, so that was one of the that was one of the stories that that people always love hearing and i always love thinking That's about it one, yeah. like, yeah, I can great, imagine. Great, great I can only imagine her not really knowing anything about Yowies at the time. She does now, but not really knowing anything about them then. That's interesting. Hang on a second, because you see, sometimes I think that they connect with people because they want to open their their minds up to the possibility. So, so has she had more experiences with Yowies or since then? Not that I'm aware of, but well, I mean, I'd have to ask her again. She is on social media sometimes. Sharon, oh, geez, that's, that's enough of an experience um, right there. You could no, hear how, how many I've never thing. heard of anybody telling about a, about, a, about a Sasquatch running alongside a car or, or a Yowie yeah. and then jumping over the whole car and, and just taking off. Yeah, uh, what it's pretty story. amazing. She actually told that story um i organized for her to tell that story directly to brent thomas of paranormal portal so if you did want to talk to her her name's sharon sharon if you're watching hi um she might tell you that story firsthand if you're interested in hearing it wow. absolutely yeah well, yeah you know that so, we have round table shows where we like to get a lot of people on to tell their experiences so maybe we'll reach out to her and talk to about get, that uh, to, to get yeah let me team. know to get a little bit of an understanding about what Sasquatch are doing, you got to look back at what the ET community is doing. The ET, are, the ET people, or they take people up on crafts and they heal them and they awaken them and they give them special abilities. The ET people and the Sasquatch people are on the same team, which is Team Inside Out. They want to 
of raise the vibration of human beings from the inside out slowly over time. So uh, if you look at the history of of the interactions that the star people have had with the human beings, at first it was like, you know, clunky craft landing and dropping stuff and, you know, and there were, and there's all that kind of stuff. And here it is 30, 40 years later, now people are being taken on craft and being escorted around and being treated like family and, and uh, 80 80 percent of the people who've been on craft say they want to go back because it's that's their home that's their family right 80 percent and you know it's, there's still 10 percent of people who get traumatized and stuff. it's going to be the same way with a sasquatch you know it's going to be the same they, 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 and they did it very slowly right because so we've been seeing my whole life since the 1950s they've been seeing lights in the sky We've been hearing stories, movies, all that kind of stuff. And right now we're in the phase. But back back in the days, they had uh, the invasion of the body snatchers and, and the, world, the world stood still and all this scary, right? And that's what they're doing now, killing Sasquatch, the, the, the uh, face-eating Sasquatch from Alaska, and right? They, they have all this media going on, and that's completely not who they are, right? But, uh, but that's what's going on right now. We're still in the beginning stage of the getting over the fear factor. And then there's the people who are still excited about it. So we, we got another good 40 or 50 years of, of, uh, of slowly accumulating these kind of stories like the one you just told. You know, what a hoot. Well, the thing about fear is that if the Sasquatch are connecting with you and working with you, they won't cross your fear threshold. If you're afraid, they're not going to teach you anymore until you get over that 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 barrier of fear. Um, We're incredibly traumatized. Uh, it would be nice to know that when, if I see one myself in person, face to face, that it's not a terrifying encounter. I, I, yep. I would. The other thing that they can do is they can send you energy, so that even though you may be initially afraid. They could send you an energy to calm you right down and to make you feel relaxed, even in like, uh, you know, if they were walking around your tent or even face to face or something, they can, they can, they can energetically send you a calming, peaceful, no worries, mate kind of energy, you know, so. One of the stories that I've heard uh, the original Australians talk about, our, our Indigenous people, is that they make you sleepy uh, and they can make you, they can make you sleepy. Um, oh, yeah. and that, yeah, so, but I guess that's one of those, those, um, that's a reflection of that ability of being able to, to make you calm, make you sleepy, make, they can make you afraid too, because that's one of the many, the things that people report to me is this unexplicable feeling of dread and terror. Yeah. Get out of, well, I guess, if, I guess if they don't like your heart or they don't like or you're in a sensitive area and they don't want you around and they're just not somebody they're interested in, they can give you either, you know, they can give you fear or, or love. I mean, they've, they've hit me up with energy so hard on, on many occasions where I'm just like instantly weeping and crying. It is so powerful and feels so spiritual and loving. It feels like right from source. It's just like, ooh, like literally <laughs> like tears rolling down my face. It's so beautiful. I've, I've had well, that. I, I, I'm mm-hmm. like family to them, though, you know, and they want to connect with me because, well, because they want to connect with certain people. And I'm not, I'm just one of many, many, you know, like I'm not like I don't stand out there as special or more special than anyone else. But it's just that if you have the ability to learn, you have the right heart and they have a connection with you, whether it's uh, through your heart or, or past lives or whatever it is, because there are past life connections with them, too then they, you know that's that's how they'll they'll go but when you talk there's so many things with energy too they can zap you so that you're feeling like you're walking through uh almost like a, a force field like you can hardly walk and whatever and they can get you really tired and sometimes i think that's because maybe you're in a sensitive area where the, where children are or whatever and for for whatever reason they don't want you going there but they've never given me anything that was uh, negative but uh you know but as far as zapping and energy, there's been so many experiences. Sometimes it's like a love zap. Sometimes it's uh, uh, a download. Sometimes it's 
you know, uh, a couple times it was, uh, we're busy today, don't come in, you know, kind of thing. But that's only been once or twice in like 10 or 12 years. And uh, it, it's just so diversified. Every, I mean, I even had, my, my friend and I were one time, <clears throat> this is kind of interesting. We were sitting around in an area and we started hearing them, whoop, 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 stuff like that. And we could feel them and sense them. And, and I was getting this sensation in my third eye. And when I get my that third eye thing buzzing and it's like really, really strong, uh, I know they're around. Quite often they'll throw a little rock or something, a little pebble just to say, hi, I'm here. Just to let you know, there's usually a confirmation right after we get that feeling. So we heard them coming closer, sense them energetically. And all of a sudden we, we, we heard and felt, it was like we heard it in our, our mind's eye more than uh, it was an audible sound. Oh, and by the way, before I get into that, they can give you any sensory, uh, auditory or sensory, auditory or visual experience that, that they want. And sometimes you can be with a group of people and only two people out of the four will experience or whatever. They can, they can give it for specific people, like a big crash or a bang or something. <laughs> Oh, what was that? And the other people don't hear anything. So that's why when some people, I'm sure you've heard where they're going around and people hear them like making a bunch of noise and it looks like they're building something or doing something right behind their tents or whatever. And then they get up the next day and there's absolutely nothing there. I'm yes. sure you've heard that. Yep. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. They can give you any of those experiences. So anyway, on this particular time where we hear them coming in and I'm sensing them or whatever, all of a sudden, in my mind's eye, and my friend and I both experienced this at the same time. Both experienced the exact same thing. We heard a whoosh, this energy wave coming at us, like, and it was in our, we could hear it in our heads more than audible. And it entered into our chest, rattled around, and then shot up out of the top of our heads. And that was kind of a unique one. Wow. The other time yeah. we were walking under a tree, and this is the same day we had a sighting or whatever, we're walking under a tree. And this also talks about time and how, well, they taught us, that was the lesson there was that they were teaching us that you can know things are going to happen before they happen. Like they were teaching us about time and there is no time. So we're walking under a tree and all of a sudden we both looked up, put our hands up like this as if something was going to fall on us from up, up above. We didn't hear anything. We didn't feel anything up to that point, but we both did it at the exact same time like this, like something was falling on us from above. And then we heard this mechanical weird cat sound like, oh, like, it was just like, whoa. It scares. <laughs> I mean, I, I never get scared because I know them. And it's a subconscious knowing too, right? So I'm not like, excessively brave or whatever but when you when you're connected with them and you know them it's just like oh that's cool kind of thing right it's never a fear reaction but yeah that but that's the kind of stuff that they do i mean and that was a lesson in time because we wouldn't have went like this and put our hands up above our head if if we didn't know it was going to happen before it happened so precognitive kind of thing yeah 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 i can think of a couple of examples particularly uh sensations and 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 audible no noises that pe some someone someone have, has reported and, and not everyone has heard the same thing someone reported being it was like there was a thunderstorm above him and there was thunder and lots of small sticks and twigs being hurled about in this incredible wind but then there were four people four young people in in this in this encounter um Two of them heard the thunder and the sticks, and the other two didn't. Right. They, didn't have, they, they all had a sense of panic and that they had to run and get out of there now. And the, and the guy who reported this to me felt like, he said they felt like they were being herded out of the area. But he heard thunder and, and sticks whirling about, but the other two didn't. Right. Um, Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Another woman heard... Uh, what she said sounded like hundreds of bunches of sticks being 
thrown at her um, at a, at a metal roof, like a, a shed roof. And the, the noise, she said, was was incredible. And it sounded like thousands of sticks. The next day, she goes out to have a look. Nothing there. No sticks. So yeah. she, she's like, what? What? How, how, how could I hear what I heard? And and there's no evidence of anything hitting that, that roof at all. She's not alone. That yeah. happens. I've heard my wife has experienced that. I've experienced that. A lot of people experience that. That's a real thing. That, that's what I said. It speaks of any audible, sensory, or visual experience that they want to give you. They can they can be selective to who they want to, to have it. Yeah. yeah. That, that goes into what I was talking about, no space. And and so that no space means they, they could be standing... They they go to a place where there's where they they themselves are throwing rocks or, or twigs on a tin roof, right? They're there, and then they are also inside your head at the same exact time. So as they're listening to the sounds of the rocks and twigs hitting the the tin roof, while they're inside you, you hear the rocks and tins. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm that's why it takes a long time to wrap your head around this idea of no space that they can do that. And, and there's like Brian has dozens of examples of this, you know, of uh, of them uh, giving sounds or sight to people who uh, who you know, one person sees one thing and one person sees another, one person hears something, one person hears another, you know, like people hear trains. In the mountains, a train. There's no train. There's no trail, train tracks. At, you know, anywhere near that, and they hear a train go by. You know, and that's the same kind of a thing. It's a trick to let us. To let you know, it's like a little hint, a little look. Look what I can do. You know. I heard two semi trucks. Sound like two semi trucks gliding head on in the woods, like bam, and it's in the middle of the woods. You know. Yeah. <laughs> where there weren't any trucks. <laughs> no, there wasn't any, any people there either. Yeah, that was that. That was actually though a test of metal, because they always test to see what your fear level is. So they wanted to see how I would react. And so I, I you know, I passed it. I, I jumped. I jumped because you get startled, but I wasn't afraid. But then I just laughed and whatever because yeah, it, they test your metal to see what your fear barrier is. Because I said they won't work with you beyond it. And they don't mind taking five, ten, or fifteen years to teach you something. They just lay it out there, and it's like your mind works on it. Mind works on it. And maybe five years later, you go, "Oh, that's what was going on." Yeah, that's how they work, and they make you do the work, they make you you come to the realization, make you own your experience. You know, they'll give you a little hint, and then you have to work it out. Yeah, that's the that's the um. That's what I'm realizing with this kind of journey and learning about these things is I want all the answers now, <laughs> but, but unfortunately I don't get them all when I want them. It's little piecemeal things that make you work to think about things and uh, can be very frustrating because you think, well, I need more information than this. I need something, something to tell me that I'm on the right path. Anything. <laughs> But, but sometimes at one point there's a big there's a big thing that says, Oh, that's what they were trying to do with the little things. And then there's that big thing that happened, you say, Ah, that's what they were telling me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I had been getting very frustrated for some time because I felt like I'm interviewing all these people who have these incredible experiences and seeing these these amazing beings and and not just Yowies, but I also speak to uh, people who have paranormal experiences, alien abduction experiences, the, the, lots of different things like that. And I, very, while I, I have always been very sensitive to energy, uh, I don't see things. Um, so I, I, I thought for a long time, I, I just must be, uh, as somebody coined this term, um, and I loved it. She said, I'm a psychic brick. <laughs> meaning nothing I'm just this I'm dense and nothing and I, and I started thinking well maybe I'm just like that too maybe I'm just not I'm just not meant to 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 see these things uh but then then and I'd been getting kind of saying to the universe if you want me to do this work show me a sign like am I doing the right 
hours and hours and hours of work for, for and not earning any money, just doing it all for for the passion of it and the love of it and the the compulsion to do it. Is it all just? Am I doing any good? What at all? And and while and so in the last couple of months, I people have reached out to me who I haven't out. They've reached out to me, and particularly one person who said, "I don't know why I'm reaching out to you, but I, I feel like I have to." And there's some there's some reason why I'm reaching out to you. And he's a um, a shamanic healer, um, and and he. He's been instrumental in connecting me with the Yowie people because he, after we had a session, he said, oh, it was it, I was in ceremony doing a, a session with a client and a Yowie came into my session with me and sat down next to me. And he, he wants contact with me and he wants to contact you. He wants me to, to, to facilitate this. Uh, and so so the shaman like, oh, saying God, that to you. Are you serious? Yes, the shaman was saying that to saying me. Saying to you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so we've had sessions together where he's guided me to a place where I could then meet the 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 Yowie who's been contacting me in my meditation since then. Um I I almost well, I did cry when he when he when he told me that. I was like, oh my God, are you serious? Really? Oh, finally. The, the, and they tears of joy absolute tears of joy like this incredible heart bursting feeling um and since then every time i have these moments i get that my eyes get all weepy and i get just i can't contain my my excitement and my joy that's a that's a classic sasquatch story you know you you they, they give you hints and, and and pokes and desires and then you can you you have plausible deniability. Is this true? Is it is this real? Am I committing myself to it? And you have to struggle through that. And then at some point you go, well, I I'm I'm already all in. I might as well go for it. And then they the Sasquatch could could just you know, tell you everything in five minutes. To sit, you know, sit down in front of you the one. But no, they want to connect you with other people. They want to connect you with somebody who's going to be your mentor or teacher or somebody who'll help you out. And then it becomes like this group thing. This is all totally pure Sasquatch uh, connection and teaching. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody's connected. Everybody has a piece of the pie. Everybody gets to help everybody out. And, you know, what a fabulous story that is. They're constantly yeah. connecting you with people and sounds like one thing with you. That's just how it works. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's I've had a couple of people now contact me who've been who've given me information that I really needed to hear about about the, yes. the Yowie people, and not um, a coincidence either. No, and and also at a time where I was thinking, okay, so I'm meditating and I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this being. Is it my just my imagination? I'm a good visualizer. I've got a good imagination. I can picture things really well. Is it just me making shit up am i you know is it is it and but 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 then someone else reached out to me who i'd meant to contact months ago and hadn't and then i suddenly remembered oh yeah i really meant to talk to this and it's another spiritual healer who who i had meant to contact and i hadn't yet and so i've jogged my memory contacted him and he gave me even more information about and he said he could he can actually see and sense the Yowie being who's contacting me. Um, so I got all this information that sort of confirmed, no, Sarah, it's it's not just your imagination. It's actually happening. Uh, and, yeah, which which was so cool. <laughs> so cool. Uh, very exciting stuff for me. So when did this start for you, 2019? Yeah, I started doing the show 2019, yes. Um, and oh, I'm only... Okay. But you start talking about Yowie on the first show. So when do when did Yowie come into your radar? Or you, or you were you said you were always interested in them. Always interested from when I was a little girl. But uh, when did your experiences start happening? Oh, in the last couple of months. So oh, just the last few months. Just the last couple of months, two three months. Um, I went up to. Yeah, I, I I finally got the chance after two years of talking to them on the phone. I finally got the chance to go and go out re field researching with my team who are based up in Queensland, which is in the north of Australia. 
And for two years, I had been interviewing witnesses for this organisation, but I hadn't met any of them uh, and uh, because of the pandemic. So um, I finally got the chance to go and spend the night in the forest, in the in the dark, in the rainforest with uh, with with the team, and that seems to have sort of kicked off everything else. Um, the, more like people contacting me that, who have information for me as a person uh, with regards to this. This. No, there you go. And here we're doing the same thing. Yeah, exactly. So, why did you reach out to me? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! There's no yeah, there's absolutely no coincidence. I yeah. mean, we all reach, we're all connecting with with people for a reason. I mean, people who are connected in, in into this uh, <coughs> excuse me Sasquatch phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's so that's quite evident. Like... I mean, you've only been in it for a few months, and it's it's more than evident to you. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's like. Look, this thing about this thing about uh, having a vision of Sasquatch in your head, right? And then you don't really know what what is that? Is just is that a projection of my imagination? Did I construct that, or is it real? Uh, and th that's another one of those things you got to struggle it, struggle it out, and and give it some time and and let it flesh out before you you can tell. But I I can tell you this story about uh, about what happened to me in 2019. Da 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 da. In 2019, I was watching a video uh, of, uh, who was it? It was like that guy, um, it was a big Sasquatch show, one of the biggest ones out there. Is a Baker's um, Hunker? No, it was that guy who's, who, um, I forget the name of it. But anyway, I, you know, he's, he's the one who was- Finding guy, Bigfoot or something? No, it was, it was, um, he 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 does interviews interviews people and the people tell their stories on the channel. Um, oh, not, Steve, Steve, something. Oh, not where's no, Germa? Not, not, how to hunt? No, not how to how to hunt. It was before how to hunt started. It's but anyway, not where's Germa? Sasquatch Chronicles. Yeah, that's it. West West yeah. Germa, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm watching this right, and then the, this boy is telling a story about how um, and, and the the video that I was watching was recorded in 2017 i believe right it was in 2019 and it was in 2017 and the boy was telling the story that went, went back to like a 2014 or something like that and the story was he went, went was going to go hunting in the and, and he had his car and and then he was walking along the road and then he started to hear the sasquatch and he got scared and then he started to come back, right? He got scared and he, he had to come, he knew he was getting the message, fear, go back, go home, we're not wanted. So he starts to walk back, going back to his car and the Sasquatch follows him along, right? I don't know if you've heard those stories before, but the Sasquatch escorting somebody out of the, out of the forest, right? Yeah. So I'm laying in my bed, right? And I just had this, I just saw the whole scene in my head. It was like foggy, you know, I'm not really a great sharp guy, but I could see the Sasquatch. And I thought, this is pretty cool. I know exactly what I was doing. And then the Sasquatch looked at me, right? I'm in my bed, 2019. It's being fit. It's being, the show is uh, 2017 and the story was in 2014. Okay. So I so I said, how cool is that? And I put out my hand to give a high five to the Sasquatch who was, who was in my mind has turned around and looked at me and gave me a big grin. And we did a high five together, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, then the, the show was over and I was getting ready to uh, go to sleep, right? And I'm going, and, and that same thing that you were saying, I'm thinking, I wonder if that was real. That was just a really cool experience. And as soon as I said that, a rock was thrown at my window. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. And I go, okay, that's cool. So I thought, <laughs> and I was excited, right? Uh, I just did a high five, high five with this, with this uh, interdimensional time zone weird thing that was going on. And so I get get up and go out, run out my front door, you know, and and um, so I'm just looking around, seeing what it was, and I and I uh, I couldn't see the rock, couldn't see anything that there was any evidence of, of that little pebble. So, uh, but then I was just out there, you know, I was smoking a cigarette, and I was, and I looked up and I see a UFO, huh. and a UFO acknowledged me, flew right over me, and disappeared over my head in in, in clear sight. So. So there's yeah. me now. Now here's here's the here's a list of characters. There's me 
Wes Germer, this guy, the Sasquatch, and a UFO are all in part of the story now, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I want, I, so this just took about maybe two minutes for the for the UFO to fly over my head, and then just just disappear. Okay. And I go, wow, that's really cool. And then I go back to bed. And then, and then I get up in the morning and think, well, wow, that was kind of a pretty amazing. Then I get out, you know, I'm doing my thing in the morning and I go in across and I walk down my street down to the to the uh, portal where, Ar you know, the Ar well, I call it Archie. That's where this big tree is. And as I walk underneath the tree, a live squirrel falls out of the sky. This is like the same as if you say a... a um, a koala fell out of a tree. They just don't <laughs> fall out of a tree. You know, I mean, they're hanging on to the tree. That's what squirrels hang on to. They don't fall out of the trees. So this thing fell down in front of me, right in front of my foot. And it was like, it was like if somebody was holding it down and the squirrel was looking around like, what happened? You know, squirrels don't fall out of trees. And then it took <laughs> off. So that was my confirmation that everything that I did the night before. So now you have my friend Sasquatch, the ET people, the Sasquatch that was uh, on the on the on the video that I saw in my head that the young boy and Wes Germer, right? And that was that was my story, right? So that, that's the way it is. So if you're seeing something like that, you might as well just give up. Say that's it. That's real. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That story talks about connection, no connection. time, no space, all of that stuff. And three yeah. three different times. You know, yeah. three different time zones, 2019, 2017. Oh, that doesn't, that doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. That's know, not well, it, it is. It does. It, it, is it interesting, though? No, it no, no, no. I, I didn't mean it in a negative way. It doesn't matter about time zones or whatever. No, it wasn't, it wasn't actually time zones, but it was that the actual live, live in the world event happened in 2014, recorded in 2017, and I was watching in 2019. Yeah. Like, 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 yeah. I mean, I can talk to that too. Right? And, I, and in 2019, I saw the event in real time. That's pretty cool. See, see okay. Like, I'll, I'll tell a couple of stories, but uh, actually, you should be telling some stories, but we'll get to you. <laughs> Thanks for interviewing us today. No, she, no worries. She goes, I'll welcome everyone to Yowie Central. You know how many people we've had on, on, our, on our show that, that has actually broke down and cried just because of so much joy and so much love it's amazing what a just that heart touching okay he's like so i said they communicate me with <laughs> and they leave me messages and i leave them messages and we go back and forth and i know a little bit about the language so this this talks about the time thing too as i'll come up with a meaning for a glyph like the y stick for instance mm -hmm. and man sasquatch connected once they came up with that meaning i'm looking back on pictures i took well they first of all they sort of can really leaving them the day after I came up with that. But then I look back five years, six years after of pictures I'd taken because I document all my pictures. And I said, those guys knew the, that I was going to come up with that meaning years ago because I could tell from the message they left, it was so perfectly fitted to the message that I said, you know, so they know what you're going to do, think, uh, years and years before you even formulate the thought. Hmm. And, and the other... And, and you know, and it just just didn't happen one time. It, it like a lot. So you know, with their lessons, they're very thorough, at least with me. The other thing is, is they can appear to you in a dream. Yes. And yes. and give you messages and stuff like. And I've mentioned this before, but I'll just say it very briefly. Like this is kind of far out, but I I've seen them shape shift, or I haven't seen I haven't seen them, but I've seen humans or what appeared to be a human that I know was a Sasquatch shape-shifted into a human. And I'm not wow. uh, absolutely, no, it, it's, it's a fact because I've seen them do things that no humans can do. Absolutely mm -hmm. impossible. So, uh, and, and we had a, a guy that's on the show quite a bit, Kevin Royce. Uh, he told me another experience where he actually had the floral fragrance of a Sasquatch connected to a human story that was very complicated, but I'm not going to get into all that, but, but just, they can shape shift into humans, okay? They can shape shift into anything. So anyway, so I was thinking about writing up Kevin's story because I'm a bit of a writer and, and whatever, and uh, and I, it was on my mind. So I went to bed that night, and I saw Sasquatch walk right by me in a dream, right in front of me, right by me in a dream, and it shape shifted into a human. 
Wow. I, I've I've heard someone report to me something very similar. Uh, they saw but, a but, yaoi. But that, I'm sorry, that was an answer, though. You know what I mean? Yes. You, it, that's how they work with me, and I think with people who pay attention is you have a you have an you, you ask them a question, and they will give you an answer. Sometimes it's immediate, and they'll give it to you in many different ways: a glyph, a dream, uh, an energy nudge, so many different ways. So, what were you saying? You had somebody. Same kind of thing? Oh, yeah, same kind of thing. Three people in a car. One person was actually riding on the on the front bonnet of the car and the, there were two people, one person driving and the other one in the in the front passenger seat. Big eight foot tall Yowie comes stomping out of the forest on one side, crosses in front of the car. The guy on the front bonnet's shitting his pants because he thinks he's, he's what the hell's going on? Let me in the car. And this yaoi goes behind the, the a, a, a really big tree and disappears. And what comes out is, walks behind the tree, but there's no yaoi comes out on the other side of the tree. All three of those people saw something else. One of the people saw a man, a human man, walk out on the other yeah. side of the tree and and walk away through the forest. And they were he was calling out to him, going, "Hey, you stop!" And this guy completely ignored them and just kept walking. One of the other people saw a lizard, a big a goanna, which is a really big yep. lizard that we have in Australia, come out of the side of the tree, climb up onto a tree stump, and then disappear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes perfect sense. And then those people came and told you that story. That's pretty cool shift into a human being yeah well i had a sasquatch walk across a path right in front of me that but it was it was invisible and it materialized right out of thin air and i saw it like as clear as a bell and my friend saw a little dog and i saw the sasquatch uh so you know it's they can do that and like i said as far as far out and as crazy as some of these claims make there's, there's not a whole lot of speculation going on in my part because they've shown me numerous times all these conclusions I've come up with and discoveries I've made about them. They show me in many, many different ways until it's not even a consideration or a thought. It's a fact. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the, 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 hu the human I saw, one, one of the humans I saw that was shape-shifted from a Sasquatch, I was doing, like I said, was doing things that, like, nobody could have done it was impossible he was running along a, a slope a mossy slope with deadfall and, and and branches and trees and spongy ground and uneven and he was traveling like uh, carl lewis you know like running at like the the, the fastest guy you've ever seen in the world and that it, it's just it's not humanly possible yeah and that yeah. was after he was banging on a tree with a stick then dropped the stick when he seen us and then took off which is another Sasquatch kind of thing that they do. Yes, so. Absolutely. So, I mean, they can do all that stuff. So, it, and, and, you know, I've always said, and Bean would, would say this too, and I'm thinking, I think that you're probably of this mindset too, is you're very open minded. Is if we represent the Sasquatch or the Yowie or the Bigfoot or whatever, however you want to call them, I think it's a responsibility to say it as it is, no matter how far out or whatever it seems. Because if you water it down, it's kind of like, why are you even in this pursuit? You, you've got to tell the truth. If, you, if, if you're just going to say, well, I won't say this because people won't believe me or blah, blah, blah. Then what are you doing? You got to you got to tell it as it is. Well, I guess that's part of why what I realized was part of my mission doing the show. I didn't realize at the beginning, but I realized after, you know, getting into it was that I wanted to destigmatize this. I want, I want people talking about this. I want people sharing their experiences and I want word to get out that these beings exist. They're out there uh, and they're not animals that we, that we need to be treating them with respect. And we don't need to be out there, hunting them to to try and shoot one to bring a body in so that we can prove to the authorities that they exist who cares about the authorities um but i agree with you and that we need to be we need to be telling it like it is uh, and getting the word out there so so that 
part of that is that people aren't so traumatized when they see them. Um, and they're not so traumatized when they share what they saw with their families and friends because they're not getting laughed at because more and more people know about them uh, and know about their true nature. Yeah. Uh, well, there's, there, there's something to what you said too about them being um, shot at and, and whatever and, and, and people trying to kill them or whatever. Well, I mean, the government, for instance, th th there's a very good reason why they, you know, they try to go after the Sasquatch. It's the same reason what they did with the indigenous uh, kids in Canada in the schools or the witch hunts or um, anything that goes against the, the narrative and the control that they have over us. Anything that opens up our hearts and our minds gives us strength, takes away our fear and gives us a, a, an alternative answer to being divided, uh, living in fear, being controlled and feeling powerless. They want to kill. They want to destroy and that's the history of, of man for, for thousands of years. And, and you know, the Sasquatch, to me, are, are some of the greatest teachers, well, the greatest teachers that I can think of. And so, you know, they're not, they're not real popular with people who want to keep us in fear and, and under control. No, 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 they're, they're, they're certainly not. And there's, there's quite a few uh, people out there who are, let's call them Sasquatch enthusiasts, Maybe they're not actual researchers. Maybe they are getting out there and doing field research, whatever. But there are there's there's a people who get quite cranky if you talk about these what we would you know call supernatural abilities, things that 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 aren't um, things that human beings can't do. There are people out there who get so enraged. I mean, we we mentioned this before, but it's it's quite telling how I've I've. You know, there's a there's a there's a creature called you, you've heard you would have heard of the dog man, right? Can I ask so, you so before you get into that? Yep. Why do you think these people get enraged? What's your opinion? Uh one of the one of the things that's often said is that by talking about the supernatural aspect of Bigfoot. Uh, it makes us all look like fools and how can we possibly be taken <laughs> seriously? Yes. How can we possibly be taken seriously by mainstream society and how can this subject be taken seriously if we're full of fantasy, la-la stuff, woo-woo stuff? Um, so that's you're talking about like researchers and stuff getting mad yeah. at Well, not, not, not even necessarily researchers. People who, well, yeah, I guess they're researching some of them are field researchers and just really interested. They're enthusiasts, so they're interested in the subject. And yeah, they're they're looking for crypto scientists. They're looking for this uh, the scientist who really cares. That's, there's no crypto scientist I, out there. Yeah, yeah, and I well, I say to myself, I don't think your cause is the same as mine. I I, I don't think we have the same the same cause. Um, it, it's it's you're getting really angry because you're thinking that people aren't taking you and this subject seriously when um why are you even worried about what <coughs> society thinks about this subject anyway how about ego because like like i yep. said some of these people because their heart isn't in the right place and the sasquatch have no interest in showing them anything you know they say well i've been doing this for 30 years, i never seen that. I've never seen a Sasquatch give material. They don't do any of that. So they, they get their dander up just because of the fact that, you know, can't happen because they haven't experienced it. They're the, the experts. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same with, I, I actually had to remove someone from the Facebook group a few weeks ago who... Not me, I hope. Um, <laughs> well, I'm to see if I'm still on there. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm in it. I'm in it. Um, yeah. But it, it's, well, if you're not, press press, press uh, request, request to join the group and I'll, I'll approve it. There was one guy who, who got on and started out by insulting everyone's intelligence and saying that clearly at Yowie Central, no one has the capacity to think logically and rationally or, or critically was the, was the word. Critical thinking is, is in short supply here at Yowie Central. <laughs> and it's like, well, if you're going to start out in your first line by insulting everyone in the group, it's, you're not going to get far. But he then went on to say... <laughs> 
Then he then went on to say that dog man doesn't exist in Australia. There's no possible way that it can exist. <laughs> it's absolutely impossible. And that anyone who's saying that is a liar and a hoaxer and um, or just wishful thinking and wanting to copy the Americans because the Americans have dog man. And, and so the Australians who are saying that just feel left out and, you know, want dog man as well. Um, and he didn't take very kindly to me removing his comment. So got back on with another spray about, how I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm censoring him and wanting him to shut up, and I'm thinking to myself, dude, I couldn't give a stuff what you're talking about. You can talk about Dogman or not. Um, what you can't do is come into my private Facebook group and insult everybody, and 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 say that you're an authority on everything and that something's impossible. Uh, I think you have a little bit of growing up and waking up to do. Uh, so I ended up having to remove him from the group because he wasn't he wasn't playing nice with the other kids at all. Yeah. Now, before I got rude and interrupted you, although I think that we got off on a good, we had a little good discussion on that. You were going to talk about dogmen or something. Uh, well, that was that that was sort of where I was going. It was that oh. that that there are some people in Australia who, and I, I've, I've heard this now from a few people, it must be not a big group, but it's a handful of people who think that there's no way that the that dog man could exist in Australia. Um, and interestingly, Uncle Donnie mentioned to me the other day, because I, I, I was questioning whether any um, original Australian Indigenous stories about dog man, they have stories about Yowies, absolutely, but I wasn't aware of any cultural law about dog man. But then Uncle Donnie mentioned to me in our conversation the other day that there is something called Dingo Man, and Dingo is the the Australian wild dog that we have here, the native right. wild dog. So, um, well, it's not it's was native maybe five thousand years ago. It, 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 it didn't evolve here, but they've been here for a long time. Uh, but anyway, so there, there is something that they do exist. They that here in Aboriginal cultural law that just not as spoken about or well known. Uh, and I've interviewed people who've seen them. Um, well, definitely. You know, I think it's very much like Sasquatch and whatever. I think a lot of these uh, interdimensionals like fairies, elves, gnomes, all these things, they have some basis in truth because they become part of people's lore and their history and their, their culture, like in Ireland or whatever. There's, Probably something behind it. I think we've learned that lesson from the Sasquatch uh, stories, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, and that's that's why. Go, sorry, ahead. go on. No, I was going to say that's why part of what I love most about this work is that all day, every day, I get to explore the world of the world of my childhood that I wanted so desperately to exist which was that that world of cryptid creatures, of magical creatures, of magic in general. That's I was gutted, devastated as a child when I was told that stuff didn't exist and it wasn't true and that um, all these books that I'd been reading were just fantasy books and, and nothing else. Uh, so devastated as a child to, 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 to be told that. It's like learning Father Christmas doesn't exist and the Tooth Fairy doesn't exist. It's like, what? No way. Uh, but but now uh, that world actually does exist. There is truth to all of these stories, and and I'm so excited to be in that world now, uh, and and talking to people who are seeing all of these sorts of things and more. And uh, more, yeah. You and know, more. This, you know. Uh, again, I have to go back and reference the uh, the ET. Uh, researchers and the ET phenomena, the history of the ET people, right? Because for like 30 years, from the 1950s to uh, to the 80s or so, it was all nuts and bolts, nuts and bolts, something on the ground, foot, you know, the footprints of the craft and pictures and stuff. There was all nuts and bolts. It's kind of like where Sasquatch researchers are into now. But um, but then in the 90s to the, till now, you know, there's so many stories of being taken on a craft and people lifting out of their bed, going through the roof of their house or, or the ETs coming through right through the wall and then, uh, you know, taking them out of their bed. And this is pretty, this is more paranormal than what the, uh, 
what the Sasquatch are doing, but that's considered completely normal now. Oh, that well, yeah, you're taking on a craft. You know, they don't even ask, did you go through the wall or did you go out the front door? You know what I mean? That, that, they don't even ask anymore. They just take it for granted. You go somehow you go from your bed to the to the craft yeah. and you go up there and have a little tour around the craft. Maybe you get a little uh, a little physical, a little upgrade or something. And that's the way it's going to be eventually. Yeah. You know, because we're, we're like our conversation right now, we're just kind of taking it off. It's, it's, it's not new to us. After you percolate in it for like 10 years, there's no, uh, you know, that the newness is worn off of it and there's no shock value to it anymore. It, just about anything you, anybody could say about Sasquatch, that wouldn't really shock me anymore. No. And sometimes I catch myself because I'll be talking. Somebody might ask me, I went to my high school 30 year reunion the other day <laughs> and um i was speaking to people i hadn't seen in in that amount of time and so summarizing what i do for a living uh, and i'd forgotten how many people don't know anything about this in fact there was no one in the room who who in, in the room of about 60 people who had any idea what i was talking about and while they were all very supportive and lovely and 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 were interested in listening to the podcast they they thought I could see in their faces. They're going, what <laughs> is this? <laughs> they were being nice about it, but their brain is going, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Surely this is none of this is true. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's funny. I forget how many people out there. Uh, this is a completely foreign subject. Yeah. When, when it's so much a part of our lives and yes, just yeah. like second, uh, you know, like second nature do us and, we have all these experiences or whatever and then you come across people who just say well why haven't they shot one or why don't they have a bot you know and that, that that's about you know that kind of stuff it just you just make it drives home the fact that how little they do know but it which is okay i mean if, if it's, it's not what they're interested in but it's uh so you're saying of, of a whole school reunion a whole class nobody even knew what a yali was no they were quite well the <laughs> I had to explain because I, I said my, my show is called Yowie Central and they'd go, what? <laughs> so I had to explain, oh, well, so it's about Yowies and they'd go, what? <laughs> and, well, the Australian Bigfoot, as soon as I said the Australian Bigfoot, they all went, oh, yeah, okay, I know what you're talking about because uh, most people have heard of Bigfoot, not that they have they've know anything about it, but they've heard of the term Bigfoot. Uh, so, so, yeah, out of 60-odd people who were there, uh, none of them – had any idea really what I was talking about. What's shocking to me is how many people actually believe in the government and how many people believe in science. You know what I mean? It's like it from is. my point of view now, yeah. the government is completely off the train tracks. They're not even, it's not even, you know, that's a no show. It, you know, it's a hard pass on the government. There's nothing that they've done ever that's of any quality or good. And this whole science thing, most of the, mm. most of the medical science and uh, and the physics and stuff that's been done, because they live, left out consciousness for so long, and they're trying to build this mainstream uh, a mechanical model of the of the world. Just it's just we've we've grown beyond it, you know. We've we've grown beyond government. We've grown. We're growing rapidly, growing beyond religion. We'll have, we're going to have some kind of a direct experience, but not a religion anymore. And and the same thing with science. Science has to transform. Yeah, absolutely. Well, science is it's kind of a weird term because I thought science was exploration and trying to discover things. But it seems that if you're not being uh, uh, getting money for a certain pursuit or whatever, or, you know, you, you it's basically just follow the dollar. They don't want. They don't want to step outside the boundaries of uh, of what they're, um, you know, what they're being funded for. Like for instance, I knew uh, a guy, Dr. John Bindernagel in Canada here, who uh, you know him. We heard the name. Not person, not personally, but because I I watch Sasquatch, I listened to Sus Sasquatch Chronicles for so long. Um, I, you know I know who Dr. John. Hey, I know well, who he, he used to hang out with me and a friend of mine and. He was open to the spiritual and the supernatural aspect of him, which is which is something because most of these scientist guys aren't because they're not, you know. But anyway, he was. But uh, he said, I can't uh, go there. 
I can't go there because I, he, he was trying for 30, 40 years to get them to look at a footprint and, and for proof and, and some of the, like, you know, the physical stuff or whatever. And he couldn't even get them to consider that. So he couldn't, he couldn't go there, but. Uh, yeah. Well, it's career suicide. If you, if you do, if you publicly state anywhere um, that your, your colleagues can hear that you might be interested in this or you're working on this or studying this, Forget about professional you know, suicide. ten years. Forget it's professional suicide, which is which is such a shame uh, because it means that we can't use a, any of the tools that we have with within science to yeah. advance our understanding at all in this in this subject. Well, that's what I was saying about the crypto scientist. You know what I mean? It's this imaginary science scientist that you're going to find somewhere to validate your experience, to validate your your reality. That's, the, that's that's a bigger myth and a bigger fantasy than Sasquatch is. You know what I mean? Because there are no scientists out there. There's no imaginary science board that's going to pat you on the back and say, thanks for bringing us this information. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, don't, talk, don't <laughs> really? ever talk about it again. And, you know. Yeah. So have you, have you interviewed or do you know anybody who's kind of like it? like us who has like a relationship and a friendship and family kind of thing with, with Sasquatch? Have you, have you? No, 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 not at all. Uh, I, so we're, we're oddballs. Eh? Yes. Yes. In a, in a really interesting, good way. <laughs> um, no, the vast majority of people, in fact, all of them, except for, um, I mean, I've had recently, I've had conversations with people who, uh, one of the spiritual people, one of the spiritual healers that I've spoken to recently uh, has more of a connection with them. Um, but so not really, as far as I'm aware, uh, um, a, 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 like a relationship with. Um, you, you You guys are one of the first two that I've spoken to um, that have that. Uh, and I'm I'm fascinated. We need to have more conversations about this because I'm keep, keep, like, keep your eye on keep your eye on Stephen and Evan Strong. Keep your eye oh, on yeah. them because yeah. the Sasquatch are going full press on being friends with them. Yes, they you are. Know, they're they're, they they're are. going out there banging on their house and throwing yeah. rocks at them and hooting, trying to like like wake up, guys. Come on, let's let's hook up. Let's like have a powwow. Yeah, you they know? were on our show and we gave them a little bit of advice and we basically just said, well, you know, just say hey. Here I am. I, I, I'm open to a relationship with this. Simple as that. Just approach them with an open heart, and yeah. they'll uh, they'll they can reciprocate. So I think that there, there's going to be lots of new stuff happening with them, and they're they're wonderful guys. Oh, they're they're lovely. I I recently did a conference with them uh, uh, a couple of months ago. They asked me to to participate in one of their their conferences about yowies and 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 little people. What was interesting and with rocks. them, I found so I. I know them because I asked them to be guests on my show and I, I happened to be listening to um, Paul Wallace, who I was about to interview, and I watched him in, uh, interview Stephen and, and Evan. So I thought, and they talked about Yowies in one of those those podcasts. So I thought, oh, I'd love to get these two on on my on my show to talk about what, what they know as um uh, original Australians, what they might be able to share and what knowledge they might be able to share. Uh, and so after after interviewing them for my show and they talked about this workshop they do up in at, near their, their home uh, with a circle of spiritual, powerful stones, um, I thought I would then go up and 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 do that that workshop. Uh, and so it's and then since then, all that activity, that Yowie activity, that that had all started at the same time. So there was clearly a reason for these these connections to oh, happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It all rings true. I, I mean it yeah, I can see exactly what's going on with you. And it it's it, it, what you're thinking is true. Yeah. Yeah, and so I've got Evan messaging me going, oh, this happened and we found this and uh, this noise and the, and and this roar. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to be buddies, that's for sure. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, 
they're really trying to reach out to them for sure. And, you know, I suggested something to them that uh, maybe they hadn't considered at the time, but it seemed like a classic example of what I was talking about. He, he could hear, they were talking about, they heard this huge roar and these great big heavy footsteps or whatever. And I said, well, you have to consider the fact that they might just be putting that audible experience in your head. You know, it, it may not actually be something physically happening. And they said, oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, I think. And, and then they kind of thought about it and, and got it, right? Yeah. That's what it sounded like to me. Because my wife, when one of her first experiences, uh, she went up into the mountains to meet the Sasquatch because they were kind of calling to her and she felt uh, pulled. And then they gave her a test of metal, too. Uh, as if she was in her car, she heard what sounded like a Jurassic Park dinosaur approaching. Like, boom, boom, like just gigantic heavy footsteps and she like hid under you know crouched down you know beside the door panel and hid and said please don't stop or please you know whatever but uh whatever it was just walked by her but i'm sure that what she was hearing was not actually a physical sound by by a, a creature it was just put in her head it had to yeah, be right. yeah right yeah so yeah. Uncle Donnie, how did he get that name? Because I hear everybody calling him Uncle Donnie. I, the Strong Brothers call him Uncle Donnie, or not brothers, Uncle, father and son call him Uncle, Uncle Donnie too. Yeah, no, uh, Uncle is a, is um, what the original Australians, our Indigenous people, uh, what how they refer to an an elder, so someone who who is uh, a wise person of, of the community. So when you say Uncle or Auntie, uh, Uncle Donnie, I'm showing him respect as as an elder. And as a, as a wise man, Uncle Bean. Uh, Uncle Bean. <laughs> <laughs> did you yes. ever? Did you ever have that guy? What was his name? Dan Wallace. What's his name? Will Wallace. What's his Paul name? Wallace. Paul, Paul Wallace. Paul Wallace. Did you ever have him on your show? Yes. Yes. He's a fascinating man. I love talking to him. He's yes. really really. You ever, ever going to have him back on? You think? Oh, he's a, he actually just asked me to to go on his show soon. So. Um, okay. Uh, Here's yeah. what I want you to do. Ask him about this quote. Say. There's a quote that Christ, there's a, a, a little parable that, that Christ said one time. He said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, come and it will come. Ask him if he knows about that. Okay, I will. You know what, <laughs> I'll, you know what, I'll you re-listen know. to this and I'll write it all down later and I'll ask him. You know, okay. I will. you know where that comes from? Do you know where that quote comes from? Oh, you're just in glitch, I'll tell you. It comes from the Ramayana. And the Ramayana is a demon war that, that the Sasquatch were fighting on the side of Lord Ram. So it was the Sasquatch and the, and the humans getting together on a really high level to fight a demons. And one of the scenes in the story was that the, the demons poisoned Ram's brother and he's going to die. And then the healer said, I need this herb from the mountain. So go up to the top of this mountain and get this herb. So... Um, Hanuman, which is this big, the king of the the king of the Hanuman clan, was which, which is a big yaoi. He goes up, and he forgot the kind of a of an herb that he needed to get. So what he did is he picked up the whole top of the mountain and brought it back down to the healer, right? And that's where Christ got the story of, if you have the faith of mustard seed, okay? And it's that faith, because of that faith right the hanuman was the example of faith in god right so there's hundreds and hundreds of gods in in uh in india right yeah. hundreds of gods right but there's more statues and little uh you know roadside statues and little places where you can you can ask for help from hanuman so hanuman is everywhere and the reason why is because no matter what your god is or what your what what your temple is you always go by and stop by hanuman first the little and you touch hanuman's feet and say please give me devotion to god please teach me because he was the example of devotion for god and isn't that a beautiful story and i'll take it one step let one step more if hanuman which was the which is a yaoi which is a sasquatch if hanuman was a religion then it would be the world's sixth largest religion with Buddhism being number seven. That's how many people uh, look to a Hanuman to teach them devotion to their God, 
Isn't that a great story? Yes. Not only is it a great story, it's it's kind of exactly what uh, my Sasquatch are teaching me and, and other people. Yeah. So, it, I, you know, I'm realizing in real life it's... So there's, it's, there's more people who, who are devoted to Hanuman as, as the example of devotion to God. There's more people in, in India than there are living in the United States and Australia together. That's the that's the gap we got because they already got it dialed in. Anybody can go invisible, pick up mountains, devoted to God, kill demons. They're pretty cool. So <laughs> you know what I mean? They already got that <laughs> yeah. part figured out. We haven't <laughs> yeah. quite figured that out yet, but we will we'll come along. You know, if you've only been feeling like connected to them for two or three months, I can already see that <laughs> you know you're, you're you're well on your way. I mean, you you just seem like you're just exuberant with with the whole thing. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm I'm a pretty exuberant person anyway, but uh, particularly particularly with this subject, and particularly in the last couple of months, uh, it's given me an incredible boost. Um, uh, it, it was the sign that I needed that I'm on the right track, that I'm doing the right thing, and that, that there's a there's reason behind all of this and behind what I'm doing. Do you have any more stories you want to share? Any more neat? Uh, let me think. I did hear one recently that was really fascinating. Um, have you ever heard of reports of Yowies with Sasquatch with uh, sideways blinking eyes? So eyes that blink this way, not that way. No, that's a good no I have not. So one of the, the people I interviewed recently for Australian Yowie research is... Uh, and I won't tell the whole story because uh, we're going to make a video out of it. But uh, the 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 crux, the the bit that uh, that blew my mind because we've only ever had one or two other reports of this is that when this person who's riding his motorbike in 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 the bush near a place called Mandalong in New South Wales, and he comes across a eight to nine foot tall yowie person uh and he stops his motorbike turns the bike off and takes his helmet off just in awestruck at what he was looking at and this being was only uh i, I think about 10 meters away so pretty close um and he, as he was looking at this being its eyes his he thought it was male so his eyes blinked like that just the ones. Wow. And yes. So like a lizard. Like, like a lizard, like a lizard or a reptile. But and I, I've I've sort of did some research because I'm I'm not a, a a biologist or a zoologist, but so that 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 sort of a membrane, that nictitating membrane, I believe is what it's called, um, is like that extra layer of protection for the eye to lubricate it and protect it. And and uh, I thought, why not if you um if you're moving at fast speeds through the forest uh wouldn't it be a good idea to have that extra protection for your eyeballs um so i don't know if you've ever heard or seen that before but i found that detail really really interesting and you've heard it more than once it's fascinating twice that i can hear i can think of right now i believe yeah. there might be one other report but definitely twice the first one was in goongara in victoria uh, and this second one is mandalong new south wales and it was only yeah, two they, years ago. whether it's yeah. real or not you wouldn't be you that you, you wouldn't be hearing the stories unless that story needed to be told it needs to be told needs to be just put out there on the table yeah well it's such a unique and different kind of um, thing to experience so i think that if it didn't happen nobody would have thought of that and to, in he, fact you heard it twice yeah he described the eyes um, as the, the the hair around the eyes being reddish, you know how uh, uh, when a dog has weepy eyes and and the fur gets a reddish and the skin yeah, yeah, actually yeah. and the fur gets a reddish tinge, yeah. or whether they've been licking at a paw, it gets red. He said the eyes the 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 hair around the eyes of this being was red there in the tear tracks. Um, and that it had these sideways blinking eyes. So, it, but it also had 
a set of eyelids like ours that blink like that. So, um, uh, the all the, the the detail of the eyes that this man saw was quite remarkable, and obviously there must be some reason why why I, that information. I've heard stories of human beings' eyes doing that. Human beings that are uh, what was it? They're, they're reptilian, shape shifting yes. into a human, and their eyes do that. So I've heard that story, but this is the first time I heard it was Sasquatch. So uh, maybe that maybe it was a reptilian pretending to be a yaoi. Who knows? Maybe. Or, or maybe that's just the way they are and, and nobody in the North America has ever seen that phenomena. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? But the I mean, idea so that you... the Sasquatch would be 10 feet away and not d duck away from him? It did eventually, but it stood there looking at him for a, for a couple of minutes. They both stood there staring and he said... Uh, like, that, that's, like a, that's like a year in animal time. You know, 10 seconds would have been about right. One, two, three, four, five. No, even 10 seconds is too long. It should have been only like four seconds and he should have, should have cut out. But the fact that he left was there for two minutes, that's a yep. tell that it was that it, he was giving him something. He was, there was a message, something that you needed to see something or know something. Yeah. 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 Oh, look, another lady uh, who I spoke to uh, a couple of years ago, um, and we haven't published her story because she didn't want to. Um, yeah, she didn't want her voice out there in public. But uh, she was driving her car with her two children in the back asleep. Night time. It was just on dusk, and she saw up ahead what looked like a person trying to cross the road, coming towards the road and then going back again, and coming towards the road and going back. She got closer, like within fifty meters, and then twenty meters slows the car right down, and so stops the car. This being is on the side of the road at the tree line, 15 metres away and staring at her. And she kept kept her foot, you know, on the clutch and the accelerator at the same time, ready to, ready to go. She didn't know what she was looking at initially, um, but she felt compelled to stop and stay there. And she said she couldn't take her, her eyes from this being's eyes. They were yellow. Uh, a yellow a, a yellow eye shine because it was just getting on dusk and she said she felt this <clears throat> overwhelming feeling of sadness like she said this is this the saddest being i have ever seen something is wrong with this this poor being that like maybe it's been thrown out of the family group or something terrible's happened but this being is so sad and she said she stopped there for a couple of minutes which, as you said, must have seemed like an eternity. While she's looking at this being and getting these feelings of overwhelming sadness, she thinks to herself, thinking only, I wonder if I should wake my son up who's asleep in the back so he can see this as well. As soon as she thought that, the being's eyes looked towards the back of the car and back at her, and it was like it was saying, no, don't wake your her, it was like it heard her thoughts for a start, yeah. looked at the back, went, no, don't wake your child up at this point. And, and, sh and she sort of made the decision that, okay, I won't wake him up. I'll just, and then because it was two minutes and that seems like a really long time at the, for her, eventually she thought, okay, it's getting really dark now and I don't want to be out here with, with this being here. I'm getting frightened. Um, thought mm, I'm just going to reach down and grab my phone and see if I can get a photo <laughs> as soon as she reached out reached down looking trying to keep eye contact with this being she ended up having to look down for a second to get her phone off the floor looks back up it's gone uh so yes but the the amount of time that she <coughs> was stopped there looking eye to eye with this being was a really long time when it comes to face-to-face -face sightings a uh, really really long yeah. time yeah but for her it was almost a mind speak situation in that she it was emotion speak it, she got that she got waves of sadness coming from this being that wasn't her own sadness it was sadness coming from this being um, yeah and he was reading reading her thoughts and intentions too yep yep absolutely so pretty remarkable remarkable sighting yeah well 
but I mean, that speaks to the abilities that we know they have. So it, it's not, it, it doesn't surprise me, but it, but it's, it's a good illustration for people to consider, you know, to consider who they actually are and what their abilities are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you're so going to go ahead. I was going to say, I've, I've, I, I am asked sometimes by, um, by people from other countries about we also have something called a, 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 a junjadi, so which is one of the original Australian words for the little hairy fella. So we have small hairy entities here that are not Sasquatch. They're something else entirely. Um, that the, and this is what our our uh, original Australians tell us. That's what it's in their stories. Is these are two separate beings. So when you see a a small hairy being, it could be a juvenile sasquatch but it could also be one of the other beings so you guys don't have reports of that kind of being over there do you in canada or all the u.s uh the little hairy guys not really what's going on with beans um oh, my, my microphone on mute oh there he is, is my <laughs> mic work now <laughs> no that those the small hairy humanoid types hmm. they're seen on craft 14, right. I think it's 17% of the people who see different people on craft, they see these small, hairy humans. And then 14% of the people on craft see the large, hairy humans. So between the large, hairy human types, which is Sasquatch, and the small ones like you got, and the, the small ones are in, in uh, New Zealand and in, and in Hawaii and lots of other places. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Yeah, that comes to like 30-something, 31%. Of all the of all the beings that are sighted on craft, are these two types? Yeah, my wife said there's some little hairy guys in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Fiji guys. as well. I've spoken to someone who saw a little hairy fella here in Australia, but he had Fijian heritage, and he said that they have them um, over there as well. Well, the Sasquatch, <laughs> the Sasquatch call them Sasquatch. The Sasquatch say that all to them that's all one. So that you know. Mm -hmm. So what are these little guys all about? It doesn't matter. What are they all about? Are they, what, what are they like? What are they all about? Oh, so they're supposed to be more dangerous than the big fellas. They're supposed to be uh, more aggressive, more mischievous. Um, <laughs> yeah, so much, ends, eh? yeah, much more into playing tricks on you and scaring the crap out of you on purpose just to for, for a laugh. Um they're they're supposed to be yeah a, a different entity altogether an ancient entity and, and something powerful quite aggressive and not overly friendly to human beings so when you well, say that goes, small, that goes dwarves elves and and fairies and all these kind of there's a whole category of them and it's quite a lot of them actually but uh yeah, so that they're around. They've been around for a very long time, and and mostly are. But I think about fairies in Ireland. They call them the she, you know, the uh, the she. And I used to live. In, I used to go visit a place called Clun Sheer Moor, which was um, big fairy rocks. The she is the rock, Clun Sheer Moor, big fairy rocks. But that's where you get banshee from too. Oh uh, yeah, right. So yes. banshees, like, they're not good. You know, that's why they call them the we people and the good people because, the, you know, you're not supposed to call them banshees because they're coming and mess with your, mess with your goats. And how, big are, how big are these two little guys? Uh, I've So anywhere from, like, two foot to <coughs> four foot, um, maybe five at maximum, but that's, that's the upper ranges. Um, I did hear someone someone reported to me not that long ago seeing a different kind of little person. Uh, this was about 40 centimetres tall. I don't know how much that is in inches. Um, well, how many feet is that? Uh, 40 centimetres. That might be about two feet tall, oh. approximately, maybe about two foot tall, maybe a bit less. Um, but these beings were... Uh, not hairy. They had similar, in, similar to a, a human being, but maybe stronger, wiry, uh, strong, not wearing clothes, 
and their skin was uh, grey, but iridescent grey. Uh, so you're saying you're it's saying like they, were, they were stronger than humans? These little two foot tall guys are stronger than people. This was he saw this being in the middle of doing a pull up onto his roof. Um, and so he, he just caught it in the act of pulling itself up onto his roof. So clearly strong enough to, to swing themselves, to climb up things and swing themselves up onto a roof. I don't know if they're stronger than human, but, but certainly pretty strong to be able to do what they've been observed doing, which was the jumping and climbing. Uh, his daughter, his 13 uh, year old daughter is apparently seeing them regularly now too, uh, around their house. Wow. So I'm, yeah, I'm actually. I need to check in with him and 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 find out what's going on there because he he said he would give me an update and and I haven't spoken to him for a couple of months now. So uh, I'm due for a phone call to find out. Are they interacting? Are they interacting with him at all, or they're just showing up? I think they've been interacting with the daughter. Um. So, she, but but I don't know the details, so I won't. I can't tell you anything other than he he messaged me and said that his daughter is being seeing them and interacting with them. So I'll 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 give you an update when I know more. No details as to how the interaction was going at all? No, not at this stage, no. Okay, so let me ask you, a lot of the Sasquatch that I know, whatever, look very, very human. They look like just big people. Some of them look a little bit more ape-like. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of the elders and the... Uh, the ancient ones look more human, uh, as a as a rule of thumb. So, what are the what do the Yahweh look like? Do, do they look? Do, can they look human and ape like too, or do what do their does their appearance vary? And and how big are they? What's the range of height from them? Because I, I thought I actually thought Yowie were smaller than Sasquatch, but I'm hearing that they're up to fifteen feet tall and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I I actually re I I would say that reports are between. Uh, six foot and uh maybe uh the vast majority would be around the nine foot mark nine 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 to ten foot or between eight and ten foot would be the average right um, but i have heard one report and this is a secondhand report so i haven't spoken to this witness myself but she reported the, the woman i spoke to said someone else in her community had seen one and judging by what they could see and where the ground had sloped down where that, that being was standing, it was 15 foot tall, um, which is, is enormous. So, so yeah, that, but that's, gotta go to, you got to go to a three story building with a measuring tape just to see how big that is. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, crazy big. Crazy big. Um, so that the, they, they vary a lot in appearance, but it's similar to, uh, to what, is reported in 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 your countries um most people report them to be sort of there's a bit there's ape like because they're hairy and and muscular and um but not there's there's something there's a human element as well definitely not an ape um but so, you know hair, the hair covering um some are reported as being completely hairy head to toe you can barely see their eyes whereas others are reported quite hairy but a clear face so you can see their, their facial features more they reported in all sorts of different colors so you the co most common is brown but the ready the ready brown um but we get reported uh white black blondy sandy color um uh various different shades of brown so you get the orange like an orangutan uh, orangutan color um, they are generally reported as being huge and muscular but you do get some that are, are lean and wiry and slender uh, someone reported one recently to me that had crossed a main freeway like a main main road main highway um, come from one <clears throat> side of the road crossed the there was a verge in the middle of the road that was had trees on it crosses through there and over the guardrail and onto the other side of the road. And he said, this being wasn't 
it was only about six foot tall when it stood up at one point. It was moving on all fours most of the time, wiry and lean, but moved like an octopus in that it was kind of, if, you see, if you've seen an octopus move in the water, they, they're, yeah. they're incredibly smooth. And, but, and he said this reminded him of an octopus. Um, we've had people describe them moving like crabs and moving like spiders. Spider-like yeah. is really yeah. common. Um, well, yeah. on. Go on. Well, think about think about this. You know, you're asking, you know, why do I think they're human or whatever? Well, who other, who other, what other animal uh, has like as much diverse hair colors? People do, but you, you know, uh, most other mainstream animals and whatever that we hear about are all the basically look the same, you know, like raccoons, uh, whatever. They all have the same colors, but the Sasquatch. Yeah, the ho- horses, horses, have horses have a pretty, horses have a pretty, okay, wide horses variety. do, sure. And dogs horses. have a wide variety, and cats. Yeah, but yeah, okay, but okay, fair enough. But, but still, the Sasquatch pretty well have the same range of hair color as humans do, right? Yeah. And I shine. Uh, the daytime eye color isn't has been reported as dark, like a dark brown or a black. And occasionally, I've had uh, um, like a honey color. But the, the but night nighttime eye shine is red. It's yellow. It's green. Uh, it's someone even reported it to be iridescent blue. Um, the eye the, the nighttime eye shine is is interesting. Do you get those same colors over there, or is it just the red? I don't see yeah. a lot of eye shine. My guys up here don't do a lot of eye shine. But yes, as reports, reports of them are, you know, I haven't ever seen them. They, they seem to do different things in different areas. Um, but but one time, but I was at a, one of my camp outs that I host about a year ago, and it was like thought answer. I was thinking, why have I never seen eye shine? And what did I see right after I said that? Eye shine. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. But um, you know, first time in like 10 years or something. But, uh, you know, we have a we, the female up here that I was initially connected with. She's got beautiful blue eyes. Beautiful blue eyes. So, I mean, I, their eye colors are in within the human spectrum, I think, too. Yeah. Yeah. So just amazing. Yeah, really interesting. And the skin color is generally reported as being a dark gray. Um, although I have had one that was... Uh, pinky um like gray pink um and and someone else said they saw uh the hand one of our teammates actually saw one the other day a couple of weeks ago he was riding on his motorbike to work at about four o'clock in the morning so it's still dark comes around a bend and there's a juvenile what we he 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 was under the impression it wasn't one of the little hairy fellas it was a it was a sasquatch but a baby one yowie um, in the middle of the road, squatting in the middle of the road. And it put its hand up and head away to brace for impact. And he said in his headlight he could see this, that the, the skin colour and it was dark grey, but it had a reddish pigmentation in it as well. Um, he, <laughs> he was obviously so excited when he after that he rang dean dean harrison now uh the head honcho of australian yowie research going oh my god i've just seen one it was in the middle of the road he almost ran into it thank god he didn't but i think he managed to correct his his driving line so he didn't hit it but it it the the little being's hand brushed his boot he felt it brush his boot um wow yeah, that was I'm a hearing, really I'm hearing good. more about that lately. I'm hearing I'm hearing more people are being touched by Sasquatch than I have in the last few years. It's just people say, "Oh, you know somebody uh, an invisible thing touched me or yes. touched my face or something." And and uh and I didn't know what it was. I heard something and then, I, then something touched me. So I, I don't know. I, they they do these things like they they do these little things in cycles. Like there was a one time where they they gave a lot of glyphs, right? Then there was one time a few years ago where they, they made these round wreaths out of out of out of uh, you know vines or something, and people were seeing these round wreaths in different states. So they they it's interesting how how they uh, 
they get on to doing something and and it's like nobody's ever seen that before like this whole touching thing that you just mentioned that nobody talked about being touched in in a, in 2012 you know yeah right well, no, Dean... the only, yeah the only time i heard anyone say they were touched is when they were going to the to the nut house <laughs> right <laughs> dean dean harrison uh um this is i can't remember the year now it was many years ago he was actually pushed charged and shoved um out of the way in the middle of the night um and and pushed over onto his back but he he also told me a story of this this happened i think it was last year actually um they they were out researching overnight and they'd set up their hammocks and he and our other teammate hammocks is um they were they were sensing and hearing lots of activity uh and so dean's lying in his hammock and all of a sudden he feels what feels like a big finger touch him on the head and our teammate steve felt the same thing at the same time it was almost like there was a, a yowie standing behind them and reaching out with both fingers and going donk <laughs> on on their heads uh, but of course he's he he quickly opens his eyes and looks around and there's nothing there yeah um, yeah you know the, your description of the yowies I, I didn't hear anything you said that didn't sound exactly like a sasquatch so they're probably just sasquatch in australia I think so. I think they're all the same. From what I understand now, uh, from from all the reports, because I, I, I've I've listened to, I listened to Sasquatch Chronicles, for example, for for years. Uh, so I've I've got a little bit of an understanding, I guess, of uh, what people report over there in the United States. And I, after now interviewing a couple of hundred people myself and also listening to all the other things that are reported here in Australia and in the UK and in South America, there are report, there are reports or in China and, uh, and in the Caucasus, there are reports of these beings all over the world. And they all seem to be fairly similar descriptions, uh, varying co color of hair and skin, but same sort of being, I think, I think, I think we're talking about the same being the same way there are humans all over the planet uh, that might be slightly different species, I mean, different races. I think we've got the same thing here with our Sasquatch and Yowie people. Yeah. 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 So what are the, um, <clears throat> and I know you can't give away too many secrets because a lot of this is confidential, but you, you see, you talk to a lot of the, the uncles, the elders and the medicine men and, and stuff like that. So what, it, 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 in a general way, what do they say about them? You know, like Uncle Donnie, for instance. Yeah, and so I don't. I just. I can just give you a very general, but 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 I'm not an expert, and I also. I don't think it's respectful of me to talk about other people's stories. We don't have to mention names. I'm just saying in a general kind of a general kind of way, like you know, like uh, that they're guardians or, or whatever, you know, just general kind of stuff. I mean, if you feel comfortable. Yeah, gen well, generally, yes. I, I I believe that they they believe that they are guardians of the forest, and they believe that uh, they their their understanding of this invisible world around us is, is very matter of fact. It's it's just part of part of life. So the the, the, the indigenous elders that I've spoken to, uh, and 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 other indigenous people who aren't elders but just have experienced things and and have been able to share a little bit about what their culture says um is that th th these are beings that we must we should be respecting um there are many stories of uh stories that are told to children to make them not stray too far away from camp and that you know that the yowies will get you if you if you go too far away don't go too far away from us um because the yowies will get you so I, I have heard that now from from quite a few different people that their parents you use that as a as a tool to make kids not go too far and not be too naughty um but that there is a genuine uh 
respect and understanding for those supernatural abilities, that supernatural invisible world stuff. That yeah. that it, that's just normal and part of yeah. life. So have, you stuff- ever, have you ever heard of any 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 uh, Yaoi actually killing somebody or, or anything anything violent like that? I know there's a lot of huge fear factor. We have a, it's very rare in America, but there are a couple of stories of some kind of an irate Sasquatch going off off the reservation and killing somebody. But it's pre- they're pretty rare stories. I I have heard the odd historical story of warfare between Yowies and Indigenous Australians. Um, of yeah, so that there's there are there are stories of combat. Uh, and and relationships that weren't friendly at all, uh, and of Aboriginal women being taken, um, being taken by uh, Yowies um, to, yeah. you know, b- being taken captive, um, and and uh, and either raped or or not returned at all. Um, yeah, there there are those stories, but it's hard to know. Uh, I guess. At, I guess the thing is you you talk about <coughs> beings that there are good ones and bad ones too. So they're not all these benevolent forest guardians that that um that some of them are, but there are some bad ones as well. One um one uh indigenous man um Billy told me that that his father um I think it was Billy, it might have been yeah, anyway, the the story was that um his father had told him that the ones with the cone shaped heads, the pointier heads were the bad ones. And the ones with the round shaped heads were the good ones. Um, I don't know. And the ones with the pointy heads and the bad ones also smell more sulfuric than the, the other, the other ones. I I don't know if that's true or not. That sounds true. I've heard that kind of stuff too. Yeah. And that, and that smell, uh, that stench that, that people notice that that's, often reported as smelling like burnt electrical something or sulfur or rotten eggs or a mixture of rotting flesh and feces. Um, yeah, but the females, every- the females can smell like like uh, floral, floral perfume and flowers. Right. There you go. That's not, I didn't, I hadn't oh, no, heard that. I, no, no. Nice. I've, I've smelt uh, the female here many times and they're, uh, they've got a very pleasant aroma. No, oh, that's nice. But, I think sometimes that they can bring to put that smell, I get, uh, turn it off and on. I think sometimes it's just like, a, well, when I've experienced it, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes it's just very, very fleeting. And there's, there's one right by me, but I think it's more because it's such a distinguishable smell and unlike anything else in, in my experience with me, I think it's just like, it's a, to let them know, let you know that they're there because it's just very very fleeting or whatever and the same thing with the floral fragrance so i i, I kind of think that they can turn it off and on and sometimes when they when you get that really bad smell i mean people automatically get scared and whatever so maybe they don't want you around kind of mm-hmm. thing right yeah yeah well some people report feeling so sick that that they can um they feel like vomiting and they can barely drive out of there they're, 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 they're feeling so unwell because the smell is so overpowering um one of the ladies that reported a really really frightening uh experience um th- th- that stench in her car uh, di- didn't leave the car for an hour like it and it made her feel so sick she could barely drive but managed to because she was panicked and she had her kids in the car and there's this massive what she thought was a monster roaring at her and stomping down towards her um she said that, and the car filled with this stench that was uh very very strong so i don't did I she literally that, see it coming after her i mean not coming after her but coming towards her so she didn't see it she heard it and she saw the trees being snapped it was her seven-year-old son she she had thrown her boy over over her shoulder and and run in a panic um, and threw him into the car and tried to get out of there as fast as they could. Um, it was a couple of months later that one of those shows, like Finding Bigfoot or something like that, had come on the television, 
And her seven-year-old son said, Mom, that's what I saw when, when it was an image of, of a Bigfoot. And um, he said that's what he saw when she threw him over her shoulder and he's looking behind her. He saw this this being and and it was a Sasquatch. So, um, yeah, so th- pretty sure that that's what was making the noise and the smell. But clearly they 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 weren't welcome there at that particular point in time. Yeah. You know, you and, mentioned... And, the, a, and it could be a teaching too. There could be some kind of teaching about that, and it, that which is not my teaching. It's just what something she needed. Yeah. Or we needed to hear something like that. Well, you know, I, like what saying, I like what you're saying about the indigenous people. You know, that's the thing that the Sasquatch are telling me. And that we, we, we know in our hearts and whatever and feel, I mean, they have a respect for all the animals, for the land, uh, all of these things. And sort of the native, the First Nations people here, uh, they're a very uh, nature based, very spiritual. They connect with the, all the animals and they respect them as equals. But we, we have, we people today have put ourselves on such a, a plateau you know, a false plateau of superiority or whatever. Well, what, what's really actually happened is that we've actually separated from nature and separated from our brothers and sisters and, and, and the things that we're so intricately connected to. We, we, we feel like we're not a part of that. And we have to get back to that. So the people like Uncle Donnie, hey, Uncle Donnie, <laughs> and, and, people <laughs> and people like that, you know, uh, that's, that's where we as a people have to get to. And when we do get back to that point and when our vibrations raise and we start thinking from a heart love based um, perspective without fear, without judgment, because as soon as you judge your vibration lowers um, without uh, the division, the separation, the lies that keep us that way. That's when we're going to have the transition shift and we're going to, evolve as a, as a human as a human race that's what the sasquatch are telling me i think i think the end times or whatever people are talking about it's not like a doom and gloom thing it's just a, a change in consciousness it's the old system out and a new system in um very much like the indigenous people you know but but on a more worldwide basis right donnie i know he's listening is he saying yama <laughs> what does yama mean anyway hello or yama i'm i'm not sure i'm not sure <laughs> we'll have to get donnie to answer that <laughs> uh, have you had donnie on your show no not yet but i'm i'm uh after our conversation that we had the other day um with donnie and and with another uh, a friend of his who's also an elder auntie luna auntie Anne marie um I'd, I'd really love to have them both on my show and i asked if they would and they said yes so i just have to line up a time well, can you why don't you have yeah. one too we yeah have- well I don't, I don't know how to have all four of you at the same time i'd have to work that out um but i'm sure we can work it out uh i'm sure i don't do a live show but i pre-record everything so i'm sure we could do it via skype or something like that don't you have uh, professional? no you can do it on zoom don't you have a professional zoom account I don't need it because I, I do all of my show is audio only. So um, I just use the phone. Uh, I don't I don't need the. And so and if I do anything internationally, I, I use I use Skype. Um, but Zoom, Zoom works. I can do it. I don't know. Right. Personally, I like when I find it a lot harder for me personally to carry on a con. I mean, I like talking on the phone. I'm not one of these texts, one of these young text people and all that. So if I wanted to communicate that way, I do enjoy talking on the phone because you can get the point across. But when I'm doing a show, I really enjoy the, uh, you know, looking at the person and it, it, it's a whole different experience. It seems like I I don't get as comfortable and in, in whatever when I'm talking on, on the phone on like, you know, like coast to coast or something like that. Uh, I'd much rather do this kind of thing. Yeah, right. I do know, I do know that people prefer to watch people's faces as well um and i am working towards creating content that's interviews that are that are video based as well 
Um, I just haven't got around to it yet. It just means learning a, a video editing program and doing all that stuff. So because Yowie Central was initially a little community radio show, so it, it's been audio the whole time. But um, yeah, you should take it to Zoom. Just get a professional Zoom uh, account, and you can go yeah. on for as long as you want. And you can have a hundred people on there. Yes, if you yes. want. Yeah, it's easy. Um, We've done three seasons of this. So how many seasons are you in? Like your fourth season or something? Uh, I'm up to 100 and I'm not doing seasons. I wish I had actually. That would have been easier to organize, but I had no idea where this was going to go when I started. So I'm up to episode, I just did 122. Um, so next show is is my 123rd show. Ah, uh, you're a little behind us. We're probably mm. in the 130 to 40 range. Oh, okay. So, so similar, similar there. Yeah, um, yeah. I take I take time off. I take about five weeks off over our summer, um, and a couple of weeks off here and there during the year to to have a break. So uh, I don't know what, what about you guys. Are you do you do a season and then you take a break for a few weeks? No, <laughs> just keep going. We're we're just relentless. Right, right. I well, find I, I, I need I need to stop. I need to have a break every every few months. I need to have a couple of weeks off at least a couple of weeks because. Um, because I'm an empath and when I'm talking to people and listening to people and interviewing people, I'm pouring out a lot of energy and, and I, I find my, my battery gets really drained if I don't take time to rest. Um, I, I, and then it becomes a grind and then I start to not enjoy it. And, and that's not the vibe that I want to bring to this. So, so I do take breaks. What is your experience as an empath? So what do you, you feel people's pain, you feel their emotions and, and yes. stuff of that nature? Yes. I, I'm, I, I feel people's energies and, and it means when I am, uh, and I guess being an introvert as well, when I, I get drained by other people, not, not energized and recharged, I generally get drained. Um, so I, I need, I have to <laughs> that's what happens to me but I do have a friend who who's very similar to me and she's been learning how to clear energy so she doesn't get as drained anymore but, but we, we we but we recharge your battery I'm sure Beans and I did <laughs> oh of course of course <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. we're not we're not energy vampires <laughs> no it's, it's not about it's not about other people being vampires it's me pouring it out um oh. that 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 and I probably learn, need to learn how to not pour quite as much out, but it just happens naturally. So, uh, uh, any any techniques that that you want to share with me as to how not to lose all of my energy? That would be really cool. Well, you can put a protective wall, a, a, a mm. protective bubble. And... I, I I do do that, um, but that doesn't seem to stop my energy pouring out. I do it to stop other entities and other strange um, beings coming for me and attaching themselves to me. It's worked um, for me. Yeah, that I works felt, for me. Well, I felt people that I didn't kind of invading my energy, you know, and thinking, you know, that they had, they were allowed to, and I wasn't necessarily appreciating it, appreciating it. So I just put a bubble up and it was like night and day. You can talk to your body too. Talk to your body and say, look, you know, I'm, I'm losing all this energy whenever I'm talking. How about we just keep, uh, keep it balanced? And just ask it. Say, I, I want. I have an issue with this. How about helping out? Ask your heart too. So try to speak from your heart, and your heart has a lot more energy than your head. And if your head's trying to run the show, it's pulling energy up from your belly and your heart to try to keep this whole high vibe energy thing going on. So in a way, it's like, uh, you know, you're you're riding your own horse and whipping it a little bit too hard. You follow me? <laughs> Yes, that's a great analogy. I like that. So this is the part of the show where I'm starting to feel sorry because you said you only wanted to go two hours, and it's two hours and forty six minutes. Right. No wonder I, my tummy's I, rumbling. I, I told you. I told you that. You know, when we start talking, time just flies, and you probably. But you know, but my conscious catch, catches up with me eventually, and I and I feel like <laughs> we got to let this poor girl go and do what she has to do. But before you before you leave. And, and by the way, thank you for coming on. It was a very nice person. One of the best shows. One of the best shows for a long time yeah. since last week. 
since yeah. last week. <laughs> since last week. Best show we've had <laughs> since last. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I did. Ac- I did actually watch your show with when you had Stephen and Evan on, and that was brilliant. So it can't oh. be any better than that because that was really cool. <laughs> not too many people. Not too many people stop. Uh, stop, uh, Stephen. You know what I mean? No. Kind of no. Catch him. no. He gets on a roll gotta, and he just goes. Things in there. You have, to, you have to, as soon as he takes a breath, you got to jump in there. Yes, that's true. <laughs> if you're an expert at that, Mr. Beans, you know how to do that. Well, he, he, he's, the reason why I got, got him on the show, right? I, I told uh, Brian. I got him on the show. I told Brian to get him on the show and then Brian, <laughs> Brian figured it, he figured it out. But it was because of this rock connection. I had this strong connection to rocks and then, then uh, Stephen and Evan are doing these ceremonies with rocks at their house, inside their house, or like right outside the front or wherever they are, and that's when all the activity from the Sasquatch. So to me, it's like Sasquatch telling me the rocks are a big deal. They're like the elementals there, and they have all the knowledge of the of the history yeah. of Earth and life and everything. And then, and then there's a so the Sasquatch rock connection, and then like when when the Sasquatch. When a Sasquatch gives you a rock, you know what I'm saying? If they give you a little gift of a rock, they're, they're saying this is this is what created life. This is a god here. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're not, their thinking isn't like our thinking. You know what I mean? Or a leaf or a feather. You know, so the little things, little things uh, are a big deal in their world. A, f- a friend of mine had a dream about a Yowie, a beautiful female Yowie. And... She, in the dream, the, the, the Yowie put something in her hand and the next morning she woke up and, and opened the front door and the day before she'd swept clean the, the front porch and lying on the front doormat right in front of the, the door was a little worm, a, de- a dead worm that had been tied into a knot um, and that was left. And she, got, she was, had a very strong feeling that this was a gift. Oh yeah, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. What, next she's time, been, you, go sorry, ahead. Go on. Oh, I was just going to say she's she's particularly connected. Uh, my friend Jazz, she uh, sees ghosts all the time. She sees orbs. She sees yeah. uh, demons. She sees the works. Um, so next, she, she's had dreams about yaois too. Next yeah. time we talk, I'll have to sh- I'll have to tell you about my sweet gift rocks. I got one a year. Here's one. Oh no, you can't see it. Here's one. Where's that from? Oh, is that a gift that you were given? Yeah, the, the story behind these rocks is just, it, it's like, I'll have to share a video or something with you. Maybe I'll send you a video of it. It's, it's incredible, but it's, it's like a Sasquatch. And then I got this one the year ne- the next year. Oh, and wow. then, I got, then I got this one a year later, and this one's got my name written on the bottom of it. Did you Did you do that? No, oh. they did it. They did it. Yeah, my name is carved in the bottom of this stone, and it looks like it's thousands of years old. Wow. No, I mean, no, it's That's an incredible amazing. story. This rock was actually just a river rock at one time. It was like gray, yeah, like a light gray, and then it turned black the very next day. And then it was just, it was just, it's incredible. It's like mind speak and uh, connection. It, it, it ties so many different things in. And then this one, like I said, kind of was the the kicker because uh you know they said i was going to get a third i got when i got the second one they said you're getting a third in mind speed and then i got this one from somebody that i actually connected in with sasquatch and she she got it found it and she said this is for you they, she got mind speed that this is for fry and she gave it to me i'm looking at it about a month later after the fact and i said what the f- what the hell my name is is on the bottom of it so I, you got to hear this story it's just it's, yes, it's so okay. beautiful it's just I would so love beautiful. to hear that story. Well, well, maybe you can you can um, we'll set up a time for a chat and you can come on my show and tell the story. Yeah, but the thing is, is it's much better with. That's why you have to get Zoom or whatever. It's much better with because you know we screen share and whatever, and I show like pictures and other people show pictures of their their structures and their glyphs and. She's their, on Zoom. What do you mean she's going to get Zoom? She's on Zoom. She's on Zoom yeah. with us, but she does a radio show. Yeah, yeah, I, I have. I usually do audio only, but I am working towards doing video content. I just need to organize. Uh, I need to practice how to edit videos because I I like to put a, a 
you know, a show together and I, I, I edit my audio interviews so that I don't change any of the information, but I, I chop out anything that's not part yeah. of the story. I'm pretty um, sure I'm part of your group. Maybe I'll put it on your group, my video, yeah. and just yeah, tell yeah. people that this guy's way out there, but maybe it's worth listening to. Please do. I'd, I'd love you to do that. There are there are quite a few people in the group who are open to, um, to to that yeah. that side of things. It's so, very hard to tell this story without you actually seeing the rocks. You got to kind of see them, and you know they look like a family when they're together. This it, it's a very detailed story with with so many different uh, elements of, like I said, mind speak connecting people in. Uh, just it just it's just beautiful, but. Uh, Maybe I'll put that on your group or something, but um, I don't want your tummy uh, rumbling too much, and I don't want you going away and saying, oh, <laughs> "I'll never talk to them again." <laughs> Tell people where to, where where they can hook up to uh, to hear your hear your stuff, how they do it, and and your group again, and and uh, you know your email address, phone number for personal uh, for people who want to make a pass at you because you're so cute. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but, but my uh, so wife wouldn't appreciate that oh you no, mean i don't think my my partner would appreciate that either <laughs> um so yowie central you can find it on all the major platforms the spotify apple podcasts all the all the major ones it's not on youtube yet but one day i'll get there technology is not my favorite thing to learn so i get very impatient um it's on all the major platforms and there is a Facebook group, the Yowie Central group that you can request to join. Um, just answer the two questions, which is why do you want to join this group? Just say you're interested in Yowies. And do you agree to the rules? And the only rule is be kind, really. That's that's my main rule. So you've got to agree to the rules. I don't usually follow rules, but I, I can be kind. Good. Yowie that's, Central. That's all I ask. Yeah, we you're doing it. such a good job, and I tell you, you know, you're you're, you're part of this great awakening to, of the earth and the team inside out, where you're lifting people's spirits and consciousness up. You know, uh, we we can't we can only do what we can imagine, and and what the Sasquatch do is is give us imaginations of these superpowers that uh, that are dormant within us, and if we can have an imagination of it, then we can strive for that. So. And that's happening for, like you say, all the solid psychic people and the intuitive people and the, you know, and the tarot card readers and the healers and all that, you know, the past life regression and all those kind of things are uh, are working, you know, to wake up humanity. Yeah. So let me ask you the question we ask every guest before we let you go, and I, I won't put you too much, make you work too much longer. How is the, the your relationship? And I know it's really grown in the last two or three months. But how is your relationship with uh, Sasquatch or Yowie or um, I don't like saying Bigfoot. I don't like that name. But I've said it about three times this show. And I don't. Anyway, how has how has your life changed since you've you've been introduced to these amazing people? Oh, my my world and my mind has have expanded more than I ever thought possible. Uh, it's, it's enabled me to, they have enabled me to connect with this part of my nature as well. And I'm very, very grateful for that opportunity. Um, if I hadn't have been doing this, then I, 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 I wouldn't have known about all this. I get the opportunity to speak to so many wise, interesting people, um, so many connected people that um, it's, it's, it's been one big l learning experience for me. And, and that's how I approach it too, is that I'm, I'm just open for everything that I can learn from this. And the Yowie people have taught me so much and are still teaching me. Um, oh, yeah. So that's, as, as you said, you, you, you mentioned that you were in a student teacher relationship. Absolutely. That's kind of, that's kind of like it is for me too. It's become maybe more personal for me in the last couple of months up until, you know, and I haven't seen one in real life. So, um, you know, I, I, for a long time, I was, I thought I was just destined to be someone who was there for the witnesses, but who was never going to see one. And maybe I, I, I won't, I, I don't know. Um, but I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm okay with that because I, 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 I love the work 
So regardless of whether they show themselves to me in this 3D world or not, um, I think that doesn't really matter. Well, they're showing themselves to you every day. And that's more important than seeing them in the physical, although, because I remember when I saw my first one, I had had so much teaching up to that point or whatever, and I realized that when I saw one, I just said, you know what? That was unbelievably surreal and supernatural because it was a very, very special. There was a message and he left me a big glove and it was very, very, very special. But I just said, this is just like the cherry on top. It's not, it's not the, it's not what I'm here for. All the lessons and all the teachings and all the love and family connection and all that stuff that they gave me is, is way more important. So, so, I mean, look at it that way, right? They're obviously working with you. So, I mean, that's, that's the thing that you have yeah. should be treasuring. And, and like you said, and like you said, if you see one, you see one, right? Yeah. I, I think if, if, if I'd seen one before I'd done all this work and before I'd spent this three years doing this show, I would have been so terrified um, at, at that, that I, that I, I don't know if I would have recovered. I would have been absolutely terrified. Um like a like a lot of the people that I that I speak to, but um, somebody said to me once they asked me this question, "Have you ever seen one?" and I and I said no, but and they said, "Ah, they're just you. You're meant to be doing all this work so that when you you so that you're ready when you do see one. You you're not ready yet, but you you needed to do all this work before you could see one because you'd get too frightened." And I thought, yeah, that's probably that's probably what it is. Um, they're and, waiting until they won't frighten me to death. And you might have seen one, but it might not have looked like a Sasquatch. Look, Sasquatch but, 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 don't Sasquatch don't want to be seen, okay? And they want to be they want to pull the strings from behind, and they've already got you in a position where they want you. You, you, you know, there's a heartfelt connection on both sides, and uh, it's not very hard for you to be doing exactly what they what they would wish that you'd be doing, which is to talk about them in a nice light and in a kind light you know that's pretty simple really you're already doing uh you know what the sasquatch need doing and that's just shining light on a you know on the magic side of 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 the this life yeah but it's not a one-way street because i mean look you know you're you're getting a lot out of it too it's opening up your heart your mind and you, uh, your excitement and whatever that's very evident in this show it's it's all it, it's uh it, it's benefiting both of you. Oh. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. As I said, I'm very grateful for for every opportunity. I'm very grateful for, for what it's done for me. Absolutely. And what it can what what the whole the whole subject continues to do for me. It's it's really special. Yeah. Really special. I'd like so, to leave with I'd like to leave with this message. That is for all the people out there who want to go and see Sasquatch. You want to go into the Sasquatch house or Sasquatch neighborhood. Yeah. And you want to see Sasquatch. Well, if you want to see them and you want to be friends with them, invite them into your house. You, you know, they, those, they're interdimensional beings. They can come in the invisible. But if you invite them into your house, that's the sign of, that's the sign of mutual respect. If you, if you trust them enough that if they showed up in your house to, to uh, you know, play with you or, 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 or just vibe you out or whatever, let them be in your house. It's, it's, uh, it's just a sign of mutual respect. There's no reason why they can't be. They're already in your house. They're already in your mind. And, they, you know, they're already doing things or else you wouldn't be watching a show or you wouldn't be uh, interested at all. So I think that's like a threshold. It's, it's like a, a hygienic, you know. If you want to be in their house and, and connect with them, then, then invite them to come into your house and connect with you. Yeah, and always show them respect. Yes. Respect yeah. is big. They've been in Bean's house. They've been in my house. I actually saw one materialize. I had a big puffy cloud of smoke in my room one day. Hmm. And I was just laying on my bed. I was fully awake, a big puffy cloud of smoke. And then my clan leader materialized right out of the smoke. And wow. yeah, and he was, he just looked at me and then he just dissipated and it was just like checking in on me. And I just thought that was cool. Cool. Yeah. We have a relationship. Cool. It wasn't like, you know, like, it, well, I mean, imagine it somebody who was terrified of them or whatever, some of the people that you've had on your show, and I'm not criticizing them, but they just have a different understanding. They'd be like, what the, you know, like, 
oh, oh you might be terrified. But with me, it was just, wow, that was cool. <clears throat> My friend came to visit me. So that's the kind of attitude you have to have or, or you should have if, um, <clears throat> if, if you're going to meet them or whatever is respect, no fear, um, love based, that kind of thing. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for coming on our show, Sarah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate and, uh, being, being invited. And we want to come on your show so that we can rock those Aussies world <laughs> <laughs> with, our, with our crazy stories. Consider it done. We'll, we'll, I'm, get, I'm actually about to take a couple of weeks off to recharge my batteries, uh, but we'll set up a time for October, November or something like that, and, and I'll get you to come on the show. That would be awesome. Yeah, actually, if we don't take any time off, but I am taking next week off because I'm actually going on my <laughs> RE and family camp out. That's my clan leader's name. So we have a camp out every year, and they always come around and interact with us and do all magical kinds of stuff. So. Oh, cool. We're going to do a show like to solo next week. Come over one year and, and, and do a camp out with you. That'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I think we're allowed to travel inter internationally now, aren't we? Not sure. Uh, I don't know. We got a kind of a dictator in Canada, but he's uh, he, he's. We've we've got a similar situation here in in uh, in the state that I live in, and 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 the country in general. It's it's all a bit sad, really. But I do think everything's being revealed, and I think that these people are going to go away. But I mean, people's consciousness—that's what the Sasquatch are doing—and people's consciousness is changing. And I do think that uh, better days are ahead. I'm always optimistic. I don't because I, I don't live in fear because the Sasquatch took it away. There's nothing to fear. So I, I do believe that we are going to come out of this uh, darkness. And, uh, you know, I mean, if you want to shine a light on something, you have to be so inherently evil and so obvious that eventually people are going to see what's happening. So when you look at it that way, these guys like, uh, I won't mention their names or whatever, but uh, these leaders are so blatantly obvious and whatever that even people who are, would never consider stuff like that before are starting to say, wait a minute. This doesn't look look good. And then, you know, opens the doors to maybe changing something. Yeah. So thanks. So, yeah, so maybe you can come. And, uh, by that time, my wife will be here because she's from the States and I sponsored her. So uh, she'll be part of the camp box again, which will be great. Oh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot to say, does, it, does everybody know that the Pork and Bean Show is actually on YouTube? Brian, why don't you talk about your YouTube channel, since you never do, and you put it off to the last minute. <laughs> well, I've got a YouTube channel where every one of the episodes of the Pork and Bean Show is on there, all 135 or 40 or something. And uh, I, I do a little edit on them. And, uh, and then I also have, well, I've got over 550 videos, something like that. A lot of them are just like of my experiences, like my rock story is on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, you know, my thoughts and teachings from the Sasquatch or whatever. So it's a really good channel and it's all from the heart and I don't make a, a penny off it other than opening people's hearts and eyes. And that's, that's the only reward. You know, I told the Sasquatch a long time ago, I don't expect anything from you because you've been so, you've given me so much that how could I ask for the profit off of it, right? So that's how I look at it. But anyway, it's called the uh, Sasquatch BC. The True Story, uh, and then uh, the Pork and Bean Show, all in one. So, And you'll see my beautiful face on there. And uh, click subscribe if you want and check out some of the videos. Share, share if you care. Yeah. Share if you care. <laughs> all, right, all right, Sarah. So on behalf okay. of Pork Cunningham and Frank Oliver Beans, the world's handsomest man, <laughs> this, this has been the Pork and... This has been the Pork and Bean Show, and we'd like to thank our special guest, Sarah Bignell, for uh, the best show we've had since last week. And, uh, <laughs> thank you. And, uh, no, we no, it really, it really is good. Really was no, good. It really I, was good. I like it. when you teared up. That touched me. No. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll hook up again. We'll 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 have a. Forgot to ask you what kind of meditation you did. We we'll to leave that for another this time. Guy, he never. That's the thing. When I give my sound uh, send off, he always goes on for another. <laughs> we'll talk. Frank, are you on? Are you on Messenger? Because we can talk via Messenger or Skype or something. Um, I don't have time to answer now because I do have to go. Yeah. Um, 
But, uh, but, yeah, uh, I can, I can, I can be on Messenger. Yeah, for sure. I have, a, I have a Messenger app. It doesn't really show the video too good, but it sounds okay. Oh, I'm. I can. You can find me on Messenger under Sarah Bignell, my name. Um, so Facebook Messenger. Um, I'm on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, my email is Yowie Central at gmail dot com. So you can send me an email as well if you like. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, or Skype. So Skype. I can. I can talk on Skype as well. So you can send messages. I don't like Skype. I never get a good feeling out of Skype. I mean, I have Skype somewhere, but I. I don't. It's, it just creeps me out. This Skype thing. Yeah. Well, anyway, thanks for being a good sport. You've been around about an hour longer than you really wanted to. We appreciate sure? we appreciate that, but uh, that's how it works on this show because we get into some good conversations and we, we enjoy them. So, thank you. Have you get any? Have you get any good stories or have any people any people who are basically friends or having a having a blast with Sasquatch? Then hook us up and we'll we'll get. Oh, them for all sure, there. I could. I've, I can definitely do that. I, I've I've got people. My teammates they got to uh, be strong because we person. ring them out oh uh, look i've got my te- some of my teammates would um, would would love this kind of conversation and uh my friend jazz uh would also love this conversation i know several witnesses who are almost now friends uh and who would also um love to have a conversation with you so we be let's get in touch after this show and um, and I can hook you up with other people who. We don't want anybody that said, "Oh, it's, it chased after me," and I thought I was going to rip my head off, and I was so scared. And you know, we don't want any of that stuff. That's totally fine. <laughs> That's totally yeah. fine. I've got people who, who can talk about the 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 good side of things too. Yeah, let's look at the sunny side of the street. See yeah. you later. Thanks okay. For- bye. Thanks bye. for having me. Bye. Yeah. All the birds coming down, take a nap on me. Hot and high, hot and high, hot and high, 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 high. For the time I owe oh my love, big old thing of pork and me. Goody, 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 goody. Love it, love it, love it, in the tummy. Love baby, love high, love ooh, love why, I love me some ball and wine. Don't mm-hmm. oh, you gotta need that feed, that feed. You got to have some pork and bacon. Pork and bacon. I better I love ball and wine. Mashed potato, oh, have a now, don't drink for later, by the time.